toddler that goes to daycare? Yeah. It takes a minute to build up that immunity. Is that, is that what the immune system? But if you are on Zone TV, <laughs> she is there. She it's is just there. a cardboard cutout. Yeah. That's the that's the Preds cardboard cutout. That's fan Don Davenport. <laughs> Who, by the way, we're very thankful. Um, now, this was pre-Ron Slay uh, joining 3HL, but we're very thankful that the Preds made cardboard cutouts of us to put us in the building, literally. Yeah. Um, the, the only problem that I had was that I noticed our friends from News 2 and some of our friends from Fox 17 were a couple of rows in front of us. Not that they don't deserve to be in front of us. I'm just saying. Y'all got put on the back burner? Yeah. Should I be upset about that, or is that me just being petty? Like, uh... J. Bon Ramon? Yeah. Uh, in the in the name of J. Bon Ramon, I'm going to say, yeah, that's being petty. And that's <laughs> well, a good thing. Well, Ramon was on our row, so, uh, you know, I'm, you know, maybe he thinks the same way I do. That maybe we should... We should have been down on the glass. Yeah. See? I would have I would have given a cardboard cutout of my belly to put on the glass. <laughs> and guess who would have loved it? Johansson. Ryan Johansson. He would have loved it. And we would have loved yep. for them to come through. A lot going on today, man. Uh, there's a little heat outside now. I'm starting to feel that heat coming off the pavement. You know how, like, when you're walking through <laughs> yeah. the parking lot, you can kind of feel that heat coming yep. off the pavement a little bit? Now, when your feet start getting hot, though, Brent, that's when it is. Yeah. We're in mid-summer then, and it's rolling. I think we should just, like, uh, I don't know, about 11 o'clock in the morning, just roll around town and just go play ball at various parks. <laughs> that would be dope. You know, I'd just roll up. That. I do. Are kids still playing basketball do outside? They do though? That? That's I the question. I don't know. Or are they the playing question. video games? They're probably playing video games. I'm going to be real. I would be until about 12 or 1. I mean, back in the day, literally, you could drive anywhere around Nashville and you'd find a game. Easily, too. Yeah, there were guys playing everywhere. That, and that was the thing to go to go from center to center, neighborhood to neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I, I mean, anywhere, any kind of neighborhood, like, you can go to the housing projects, you can go to neighborhoods, like, I remember going out to Brentwood playing, then we come back out east and play, then we'd drive out west and play Those out north. Those right on 8th Avenue? Yeah. 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 Over there by the Reservoir. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, this yeah, is really, really, really good. And, and guess what? It was competitive games, too. Yeah. It wasn't just people out there jacking around. It was people you know, out there Sometimes, like, I, would, uh, I lived over by Harpeth Hall, so I would walk down to Julia Green every once in a while, and there'd be, like, a bunch of old white dudes playing there, which <laughs> yeah. is fine. I mean, that's where I met George Plaster. Hey, guess what? See? <laughs> and guess what? The ones with the shot. knee brace. Yeah, see, the ones with the knee brace are the ones you got to be worried about. <laughs> I'm talking about they'll shoot that hook shot, man. That's got hooked hook from the three in the corner. Yeah, and they I are, but they, they are, but they're going to compete. I, it's a guarantee. <laughs> it's a guarantee. It is a guarantee. Downtown YMCA it, was the spot, boy. Saturday mornings, woo. Yeah. Real serious. Yep. Um. So uh, that's, that's what time of year it is, man. And uh, so it, it's funny. Like, I heard Joe Hunk's uh, uh, sports update. Talking about that tournament that's uh, going to be, where is it, Orlando? It's going to be in Orlando. It's the ESPN Invitational. I love that. And Belmont's ESPN involved? Invitational. Yep, so, Belmont's involved. Iona, Kansas, Alabama. Those are just some of the teams. Belmont and Alabama, they play a similar style. That would be an interesting yeah. uh, matchup. I wonder the four out deal. Yeah, does, does Belmont get the nod this year just because they got snubbed this past year for next year's tournament? I think you got to go. They they may do something with those. Weird so. thing is, this tournament tips off on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Really? Thanksgiving Day. It's Thanksgiving Day, Black Friday, and then the Sunday oh, is, wow. is the three days of this I'm tournament. I'm all in. I mean, there's always basketball right oh, around. Oh, you better believe I, it. That's yeah. when it's cranking up. Yeah, and so you're watching NFL. You're watching college basketball. Mm-hmm. They're playing, uh, I don't know. What, what's the weirdest place you played? I know you played in Hawaii. Did yeah, you ever was... go down to, like, um, um, one of the islands? Um, Did Tennessee do that while you were there? We went to – where did we go? We went to Puerto Rico, I want to say. San Juan. Mm. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was. It was Puerto Rico. We got we got smacked by Tulsa. <laughs> but, but the gym we played in was – it was like a – American University or something? No, they, that was I, – I, no, I worked out at there. One. I worked out at American University. Oh, no, didn't. that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> that's what it was, and it was only like three rows of it was only three rows of bleachers there. The guy that people could watch. It was like it felt three like COVID was going bleachers. on. It felt like COVID was going on. Wasn't no fans there, and I don't know. I don't know why do we play in that little gym because we didn't. Is that weird to play in a situation like that? Yes, and that's why we got slapped the way we did by Tulsa, and that's why we wanted them so bad. 
You guys needed we got the people. The, you needed the cameras. You needed yeah, we the needed attention. All, especially at that time, dude. Like, come on, man. <laughs> so Football does that mean that Maui is, is difficult because it's in a small gym? No, because that's a pack. Okay. Um, what do you call that? Um, what do you call those gyms? Though? A hot box. That's a hot box. That's different. You love you love those gyms like that. This one literally had like three rows, and it may have just been on one side of the floor. It was like COVID was going on in 1999. And they wouldn't let nobody in the gym, dude. It was it was amazing. I, it, it was maybe American University was onto something back then. Huh? Maybe the floor was slick and everything. That was a bad gym. That was just a plain bad gym. I'm just bringing up bad memories for yeah, you. Yeah, that whole well, that day. The reason why I brought that up is because uh, when I heard Joe Hunk mention Belmont, I was like, man, I wonder what Ron Slay playing for Belmont and Rick Bird back in the day would have been like. Like if you'd have gone to Belmont and all these guys are out there shooting threes and you're just running around. Oh. Waving your headband and, oh. and two hand jamming. It would have been going. I, I, the curb would have been rocking, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. It would have been a curb. It would have turned into the block party. I would have started calling it a block party. Curb party. Come to the curb. We got a block party going on. Oh, that would have been. That would have been pretty dope. That would have. That would have been dope just to play in Nashville. Period. Like you know, what I mean, anytime. Like that's why I love playing against Vanderbilt. Anytime we got an opportunity to play anybody from Nashville. You know, it's funny. When, was on. when um, Jerry Green left and Buzz Peterson was hired, you were there. Yep. Um, I think that's when Tennessee and Rick Bird talked a little bit. Really? And and Rick Bird grew up in Knoxville. His his dad's a Hall of Fame writer. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's right. That, that, would, that would have been interesting because, I mean, he's run this system for yeah. ever. He, yeah, yeah. That would have um, that would have been. I, you I would have shot a lot of threes. Oh my gosh, I would let it roll. I'm gonna tell you what, Coach Conroy, who's um who's hired over at Vanderbilt now with Jerry Stackhouse, who was Nashville, an assistant yep. coach, yeah, um at Tennessee at that time. He he's the one that helped talk Coach Peterson into letting me just launch it. So because Coach Conroy made me sit and watch. Ray. Jerry Green didn't want you shooting threes. He didn't mind, but he wanted. I, I was. What would he say to you, Ron? You're so good inside. <laughs> you play up the box. Yeah, like <laughs> threw out a compliment yeah. sandwich. You be like, "Damn, coach, I think you're right." You're right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that gonna get me on the floor? Yeah, because especially at that time, it was four or five guys vying for one position. So yeah, I wanted anything. So I was inside. But when going in, going into my junior year, Coach Conroy made me sit down and watch tapes of Ray Allen and watch his footwork. And he used to tell Coach Peterson, "If he does it this way." It's fine for him to That's shoot. That's a big part of the three, right? It the is. footwork. Yep. And I used to have to go heel, left foot first, heel toe. And he was like, you can let it go. If I didn't do it, like I had a bad habit of going on the ball of my foot sometime and like shooting on your tippy toes, he would he would hate that. But if I that's why if you go back and look at the film, I'm shooting from the second E in Tennessee when we had to spell down on the court. I remember your senior year. It took a minute for people to even go out on you yep and so mm -hmm. you had open looks oh, for a minute oh and i loved it <laughs> i love i was putting in a lot of work for that though you really but, were yeah. yeah how many yeah. people just a second ago practiced their three-point shot listening to him go heel to toe and how to shoot because i'm sitting here back here going how do i shoot a three <laughs> yeah. i know no i know i think it's good for slay to say that because i think a lot of kids out there think that it's the form of mm -hmm. and the release and, mm -hmm. and those things are important but it it's, it's the, the base. footwork, yeah, and your footwork that yep. gets the rhythm going. That's exactly it. That's it. That's exactly it. your footwork. Is it's like dancing. Everything. That's it. That's what I explain to people when I train them. <laughs> really? Yeah, like on the block. This is this is. If you can dance, you can. You got good footwork. Use it out here on the court. Why wouldn't you? Like that's what you want to see a ballerina. I remember my mom put me in. Uh, here we go. You already started. Do it. Go. Do it. Say it. <laughs> go. Right, Where's Babs? Go. Where's Babs? <laughs> my, here we my, go. My mom put me in. Um. Ballet, man. Ballet and tap. Because she had heard Gerald Wilkins did it. Yeah. And it helped Gerald Wilkins. I remember Willie Galt played for the Bears. Those 85 Same Bears. Thing. Yep. He did it. Um, <laughs> so, a lot of athletes did it. And because was, of the footwork. Yep. How old were you when I you did that? I was about 12, dog. Oh, my gosh. What your friends? What your friends think about Dude, that? Dude, uh, they... they they didn't know. Did they, they didn't know. They didn't know. And the people that were in there were just looking at me like, dude, this is a really tall dude. That's cool. I was only in there about one or two weeks, though. And I, but it, I'm, I'm going to be honest, it, it did help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, the sure. pirouettes and everything like that. Do you remember some of the dances? No. If I did, I wouldn't show you. <laughs> I know you would love it. He is on TV first right there. <laughs> hey, uh, Preds last night. Uh, <laughs> head coach uh, John Hines said they played well. Yeah. Which they played better, but I have a hard time with that when you don't win. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, you as a for the player, do, do you do you think the same way? Like, 
It's hard to say you play well when you don't win. Brent, there's so many things in my mind that's going on about that game. It, and one of them isn't we played well. Because if a coach comes out and say that, as a player, I'm thinking, ooh, we played well, but y'all lost. So that's is y'all played better, and we still controlled you guys. C- cool. I can't wait for game three. Here's, here's the biggest problem um, that, that they had last night to me. Carolina knew that they could rough up the Preds yep. because they knew they could take penalties yep. because they knew the Preds weren't going to score. In the power play. Yep. 0 for 7. 0 for yes. 7. And here's the other thing. In terms of high danger shots while the Preds were on the power play, Carolina had more shorthanded than the Preds had on the power play. Hey man, it, so when, when you're a team and you know that they're not going to score in the power play, that changes how you play five on five. Right. Because you can go rough people up, man. Yeah. Because you don't care be if they call, with you it. don't care if they call a penalty. They're not going to do anything. Plus, they had it's the one goal lead, them. and they knew the Preds couldn't score. I just so they they changed the way that they played, and and the Preds just couldn't couldn't get it done. Now, you see, Soros was awesome. Yes, he was. They completely wasted that performance. Yes, he was. He that got breakaway. Down. That breakaway. My oh. heart sunk until he made the stop. The hey, breakaway. Man. The yes. two on one. Prez had a three on one, didn't get a shot off. Dude, like that that's a <laughs> that's a highlight waiting to happen. You right imagine there. that in basketball. Yeah, exactly. Three on one in basketball and you don't get a shot off. All of it is equal to that to me. All right. So I'm riling Slay up. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah. Got, he's got smoke coming out of his ear. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh your reaction to uh the loss last night, three nothing uh in Carolina. Preds down two oh in the series. Coming home for two. Can they turn this thing around? Are they done? Game three, a must win, right? 615-737-1045. Have a late lunch with Blaine and Mickey. No, but people eat beef tongue. That's a thing. Lucas nodding. (laughs) I just can't imagine a cow going, like trying to move with no tongue. That's a cow. That's a big tongue. Oh, yeah, it's a big tongue. Blaine and Mickey. Tomorrow afternoon, 1 to 3 on 104.5 The Zone. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about cow tongue, but Buddy Allen Carpet One uh, can help uh, hook you up with the uh, the floor issues that you might be having, and uh, they can certainly get that done. Is your bathroom overdue for a major overhaul? When it comes to beautiful bathroom renovations, the experts at Buddy Allen have got you and your family covered. Whether you're seeking a simple update like a small sink backsplash or top-to-bottom revamp, they have the products and skills and experts to make your vision a reality. Check out the new showroom in Donaldson, 2405 Lebanon Pike, 615-883-3289, or check them out online, buddyallencarpet1.com. When was the last time you took a good look at your garage doors? Hi, I'm Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons Garage Doors. My homework assignment for you is to really evaluate what condition your garage doors and openers are in. If your doors look dated and run down, call us out to give you a free new door estimate. If it squeaks or is just plain loud, then let me get one of my technicians out to your home to evaluate what must be done to fix these problems. You'll be amazed at how much smoother we can get your current garage door running. Call us today.
<laughs> oh man, thong song. The thong song. I saw Cisco open up for um, In Sync at Nissan Stadium. What kind of? Man. He had the silver hair. I don't know. I wouldn't yeah. stand because he was blonde for a minute too. Yeah, though. he's blonde. Had silver hair. This that was his only hit. I mean, he played a bunch of other songs oh, before he played no. that one, which I guess I would too if I were him. Yeah, it was better as a group. <laughs> Drew Hill. It was better as a group. Man, I forgot my. Uh, while you talking about getting a headache eating cloud bread, I was eating <laughs> Panda Express. I was going to give a shout out to my guy, man. I forgot who, who Mark, was just. Mark! Said, yeah. Hey, you boy, you something else, boy. You told me. Hey, boy, hey, I, hey, hey, man, let me tell y'all something, listeners. I'm learning the game, man, the radio game, man, and I, 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 I've learned from Brent nothing. And I mean nothing is off is is is, is off the scale. No, nope. yeah, everything is on. No, and I've been doing that. Like when I was walking around the neighborhood the other day, I, I was remembering their names. I yeah, said with name that three sloth times. dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, man, I meant to walk this morning and I didn't. So. That was Jeff and uh, Nessa. Uh, Nessa, yeah. Yep. How do you remember that? That dude is amazing when he come on his radio. Seriously. Man. Hey, I'm telling you, like I just forgot it. I was gonna call him Matthew, but we got Matthew on today. It frustrates the crap <laughs> out of my wife because she'll be like. Uh, did you stop and get the bread at the store like I told you? <laughs> no, I didn't remember. <laughs> hey, you all remember? Yeah, but you can Random remember. names at Panda Express. You can remember who played right field for the 1981 <laughs> Astros? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Bass. <That's> cr- <laughs> Wait, you seriously? I, I was sitting here trying to remember if I could think about who that was. Hey, man. That's wow. Hammer Terry Mumphrey. They, they went through some people. Tony Scott was in center, though. Let's see. Look at them. Yeah, and then Tony Scott uh, later directed uh, the Lethal Weapon films. Not Did the same. It? Not the same Tony. Oh, okay. Scott. Oh, well, no, that was Richard Donner. Sorry, but I think Tony Scott was involved. Anyway, you know, to your point, you ran into a guy named Mark at Panda Express. Yep. And when I went in there, I was looking down at my phone about to order something, and, and um, I'm looking down at my phone, and the guys asked me what I want to eat, and um, I told him, and then all of a sudden the guy says, "He's in the building. He's in the building." <laughs> Hey, man, I'm getting ready to go watch y'all right now. I said, hey, man, I appreciate it. Man, y'all doing a great job. So, shout out to Mark, man. Shout out, shout out to all the listeners that we run into, man. So, the, what was the reaction in, in Panda Express then? Like, he's um, in the building, he's in the building. Everybody looking at y'all like you're crazy? Actually, the guy didn't even look up. That was fixing my food. It was, who's in the building? I need two more hours, man. I got to get on out of here. order. Yeah, well, you want fried rice or chow mein in the building? <laughs> just what you want. Just give me your order. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Just give, give me your order. I love some fried rice, man. Just give me one real five dollars. <laughs> By the way, it's uh, Terry Poole was in right field. Terry the Poole, hey, there you go. See, honk, now you got honk on it. Yeah. Can I tell you why I'm upset? Oh, you want to go? You go get it. Why are you upset? No, no I, d- I do need no. to do this. Please. We'll do this first. Let's not forget. <laughs> Joe Honk's like, please. <laughs> Can you do the radio <laughs> stuff, please? Before you guys start telling yeah. jokes. <laughs> People ask me what I do for a living that don't know. Yeah. I, I always say I tell jokes on the radio. Yeah. I mean. Do you like them? Do you love them? Watch more of them. <laughs> we need more goals, man. We got to figure that out. I mean, two goals in 120 minutes. Shoot. That's, I mean, they have two more goals than me and you. Hey, man. Yeah. In 120 yeah, minutes. None of those were on power plays. And like Ramon said earlier, I, I can't even skate. But I would love to be on the glass. Oh, they'd be just, I mean. They're, the effectiveness would be very simple. <laughs> Ramon the same. was out there <laughs> yeah. or whoever. Hovenin. That's tough, man. Uh, Zach Brown. Maybe he could be out there. Zach Brown, band tickets. We've got three pair to give away today because we love y'all or because we forgot to do it the last two days. You choose. I, don't, I think it's because we love we love the people, right? So oh, we love the we people. We love the people. Be caller number five right now for a chance to win a pair of tickets to see Zach Brown bands the comeback tour at Bridgestone Arena on October 17th. We have new listener lines, so we just open up the uh, the whole thing for you. 615-737-1045. Make it easy. And hurry up before I call in. Zach Brown band, um, those guys are so freaking talented. Love them. And one time, one time, one. it's so hard to get tickets to the CMA Awards. And one time we got tickets. And so we go, and we're sitting on the side, and Zach Brown Band's about to play. And then here, um, here comes Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, and he sits in the, in the drummer's seat. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so while they're in the break, they're kind of warming up, and he is just – he's the best drummer in the world, Dave Grohl. Mm-hmm. And he's not even the drummer in his band. Um, that would be Taylor. But uh, he was a drummer for Nirvana. 
Dave Grohl. Um, so anyway, uh, that's my Zach Brown story. So I saw them. Nope. See him there, nope. of course, but you can see them in, in concert. And we're going to give away tickets at, uh, theoretically, the plan is 420, 520. So Wait. stay tuned. Yeah. All right, what are you upset about following last night's loss at Carolina? Well, it's two things. One is kind of. You're upset about two things. Yeah. Okay. One is a little off. It's a little off outside of the game. Okay. Uh, the first one, though. Did you run out of Tito's? Is that no? Okay. Um, but that was, it was definitely a Tito night because I was feeling so good about it. I was probably you felt about, good about that game. I did. I oh to start gosh. the game. I'm saying yeah, to start but Todd the game. Furman told you not to bet the press. I did. <laughs> but when Todd when Todd leaves a little 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 bit of light. When he leaves the door cracked a little bit, I think that's Todd telling me if you come down the hallway and you see the door cracked, that means come in. Just because he has a sign on it that says do not enter doesn't mean don't come in. He wouldn't have left it open for me. I don't know. If you go down the hallway when you're a kid and mom, mom and dad's door is, is cracked open, I'd probably stay away. Because that means it's mostly closed. Yeah, but <laughs> my dad has the same name, and maybe he was coming out of the bathroom or something, and mom said, hey, Ron. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's, she's talking to me. And I was just busting on in. Because sometimes you go over that door and you're not going to like what Might. you're going to see, which is what happened last night. <laughs> that's exactly what happened last night. And what made me you so upset. You see how upset? we equate watching the Preds see, come to on. opening the door on, to your man. parents having everyone sex. Can relate. Everyone can relate to this, man. <laughs> it's some form of fashion. You don't see either one of them. No, you don't. You don't want to see the power play and you don't want to see the power play. Oh, my gosh. In, in, either, in either way. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Preds were as My ineffective problem. in their power play exactly as you could possibly be. And going down the stretch of the game, yeah. this is where I got upset. It was 1-0. to zero. Then they pulled the goalie. You know how I feel about that. No problem. Carolina goes up 2-0. After that, the, the goalie comes back in. They miss. I forgot who it was for Carolina that came around the back of the net and then ended up scoring to make it 3 nothing. I hope, I think. It was less than a minute, maybe yeah. less than 20 seconds to play. It was 57 seconds, I believe, is what was. Hey, so, dude. Real quick, before you go where you're going. Okay. Cause, cause, I'm going. Because you're going to go there. I'm going regardless. I, I had been doing some other things. My wife had, like, a function at her office, so I DVR'd the game and went dark. I, I turned my phone off when I got home. I put my phone next to my bed, and I I'm went out. And, and so my 14-year-old was watching the Grizzlies game. And so we watched the end of the Grizzlies game. And then when everybody left, that's when I started the game. So that's why I was behind in your text Okay, strings. okay. Uh, but you were fired up. I was oh. on fire. Oh. Oh, he I was bad. P.O. He I was, was P.O. Bad. Because that third goal, not only did it make me lose my bets, but I'm looking at the Preds and I'm saying when they come back out for this game after getting humiliated in that third period and the part of the second period of game one, they're going to hold the fort. I'm okay you getting beat 2 nothing. Because that second one really don't count when you pull the goal. You're just trying to make something magical happen. That third one, that counts. I equate that to you being up 25 in a basketball game and the person goes and throws it off the backboard, windmills it, and then starts getting the crowd hype. While you're just standing there watching it. After you think the game is over. Yeah. <laughs> I equate that to a quarterback getting the victory formation and saying, set, hut. And get ready to take a knee and fake the knee and throw a 60-yard bomb in your house and score again. <laughs> and you sitting there and accepting it. That's my problem. Where is the – like, you, y'all tell me if I'm wrong, man. You're up 2 nothing. The game is over. But play Carolina, it out. Don't let them score again. That's what yes. they're doing. That, and that's the disrespect I'm talking about. That, You're and, saying have some pride. Come on, man. And when it was one nothing, it really felt like it was 3 nothing. It, like, it did. It, seriously, like you were just going, oh, God, when they went up so early, you're just, well, this sucks. I mean, how many times you're watching a hockey game and you're like, oh, crap, we're on the power play. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I again. kept saying, do something. Do something. <laughs> do something. It, Anything. And something. The, the problem is, man, you look at that. And Carolina, I believe, is looking at it and saying, like you said earlier, they feel like they can do anything to this team. We can get a penalty. We can play 5-4. It's no problem. I've Nothing's talked to hockey happen. players before that say that when, when they know that the other team doesn't have anything going in the power play, it totally changes everything in the game because they know that they can they can play however rough they want. They can play be as physical as they want because they know they can take penalties. You had a player get his head slammed into the boards. Yes. 
and that didn't get you fired. Up I mean, enough. I mean, I mean, push from behind, uh, seven Ace miles plant. per hour straight into the board, dude. Like I, I say, okay, now here's my problem. Coach Hines said they played good though. That's another problem. But here's my problem. They played problem. better. They did, they did play, play better. better. They played better. I'll give them that. But they're still down 2-0. Here's my problem. What's your problem? When you bring Slay on, Coach Fitzgerald got on here and said it. Coach Smith got on here and said it. I've said it. I'm loyal to a fault. So you've reeled me in. You've reeled me in, and I am now a fan. Don't let me down. Don't let me down this way. This this ain't the way to go. Like, I listen, I'm a professional trash talker. Whether it be good or bad, for went, the good for my team or against my team. You went pro at trash talking at the age of like nine. Yeah. Every been in bit the of game it. for a minute. Yes. And and Jersey will be up soon. All I'm saying is, Preds, you can't do me like this. Don't let them, don't, don't let them see, just don't let them smush my head in the sand, man. Like I can't take that, Brent, not cheering for a team, knowing how loyal. I'm out here. I'm out here on the front line. I'm trying to get on the glass, man. And I'm trying to get on the glass. You're going to be down there for three hours before the game tomorrow. Come on, man. I mean, you want to talk about your hype meters Come about on, to dog. be up? Dude, I'm going to feel that energy. And, and this is my thing. This is where the loyalty gets me in trouble at. I don't know when to say enough is enough. You can't worry about being too high as a sports fan, though, because of the fall. You can't worry about the fall. I, and I don't. Usually I'll keep you, climbing. Usually you don't. Do. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm going to keep climbing. In this situation, I don't want to be looking down like, ooh, that's a long fall. That third goal got you. That third goal crushed me. I felt it was so. Any other time, Brent, if we got y'all up by 20, you come across half court, you dribble it out. You stand at half court and dribble it out. They didn't dribble it. They could have easily took that puck back out. To center ice or just wasting some time. They said, no, we're going to score and let them know this ain't nothing that y'all want to play with. We got some for you. I know we're going to Bridgestone, so watch all this momentum we're going to take with you. Hey, man. If they don't feel like me and then we get to hear Joe Hines. You, you want to hear it? Coach Hines? Yeah, come on, fire me up some more, man. <laughs> All right, this is uh, on, this is John Hines after. <sighs> come on, fire me up some more. You man. have the, you have the questions. I really don't need to say anything. Just just listen to this hey, and the, Joe Rex Road from the Athletic and and um um. Hey man, Channel Five, mm. Steve from Channel Five, listen. Mm. John, we talk a lot in the, these playoffs about goalie stealing games. Did you think that? Soros played one of those games uh, and that it was basically squandered tonight. Is that, is that you? Is that Joe? The Could you hear me? Should have been, yes. You got me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you ask if our, if, if our goalie stole the game or their goalie? Well, no, what I was saying was, was Soros's performance tonight, sort of a classic, you know, goalie stealing a game in the playoffs, you know, that obviously he didn't win, but it was, you know, what about this, the squandering of his performance? I thought our team played well. Steve Lyman. John, when you're down 2-0, and, and obviously there were a few mistakes in, in game one, and then tonight the, the power play rose, what do you hang your hat on or, or what do you take as a positive to, to get some, I guess, positive mojo going into game three? Regarding what? Oh my just the way you're, just the way you're playing. How, how, do, you, how do you take a positive or, or <laughs> have a positive mentality going into game three? I, you know, I, I, I think the last two questions, like, did we watch the same game? No. No, you know, I, I think when you look at the hockey game, we played a pretty good game. I thought their their goaltender made some really good saves. We had good looks. I think you look at shot attempts, you look at shots, you look at offensive zone time, you look at how the game was played. We've got to do a better job on the power play. But I think the last two questions, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of good things to come in the game. We're in a series. We were a better team than we were uh, in the first night. We obviously know the power play has got to be better. Uh, but I think there's a lot of positive going in, going out of this game. And then coming home. <laughs> hey, man. So, as a former player, you, you hear a coach talk about how we played well, but you didn't win. Dude, what game you watch? Listen, even if that's true, you don't say that. No. 
He just it, went game one when you were calling people out. Yeah. What was it? What was the spread? What did they lose by in game one? Here's the thing, too. Three. What did they lose by in game two? Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't watch the same game, Coach. <laughs> See, that's what – this is why I take over the locker room. Well, here, here's here's one question. Because I, I came away thinking the Preds did play better, but the more they I did. thought about it, did the Preds play better or did Carolina just play a different game? Because they didn't – they they weren't fearful of the Preds scoring a goal. So you can change the way that you play. And I didn't notice it necessarily in real time, and I'm certainly not going back to watch it, even no. though it's in my DVR. Yep. But when you're over seven on the power play, again, on, you, you, cha- you can change the way that you play. Come on, Brent. And so maybe that's more about Carolina controlling everything, almost like, almost like a, a predator of an animal not a natural predator, that's got his prey in the corner, and he's just messing with it. Just keep on toying with it. Because I know I'm going to kill you. And you know I'm going to kill you after after I just heard you whimper in the corner. But I'm just going to mess around with you for a little bit make you think you got a chance. And it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> like, that's it. It's fun. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him over there in the corner. Dude, this is – you just got six turnovers, seven turnovers on their side of the 50. You didn't even get a field goal. Right. You didn't even get a field goal. Yeah. I told y'all the other day when I, I – I don't know why I started to think about this, but I started to think if the Preds don't win this series, is John Hines gone? Yeah. And it ain't it ain't going to be because the Preds don't win the series. He's kinda, it's going to be because these comments. He's, he's kind of acting like it. He may know something. I, I, listen, man, in any sport, competitive sport, that's not the fight you want. That what. I ain't going to say that, you know what I mean, because this could be – this. I'm, I'm going to blame it on generation. This could be a whole different generation. But I guarantee them players don't feel like that. I guarantee them – I would love to hear the players. Just go back to the interview that we had last week with – Exactly. You know, I mean, exactly. seriously, that, that sounds like – that isn't a generational thing because he sounded – He sounded it, like yeah, I sound. Exactly. Like we pissed off in this locker room. We sick of losing the way we losing. And then here they are, and they're going to tour with us like that. Well, that last goal was nice. It's going to be interesting to see how they come out on Friday. It because is. you're right. I mean, when you're down 0-2 and you stop and think about it and you're going home to change the venue and all those things, you got to decide right now whether you want any or are you ready for vacation. You're going to lay it on down. One, two, three, Cancun. What you going to do? Cause, and I honestly don't know where they are. But, Brent, this is the bad because thing. Because I feel like that they – I feel like that they feel like they achieved something – by making the playoffs after the start that they had. I hope they don't. And right? that's a great point. Like that was the carrot. That, that that that's a great point. I'm just the problem with that is your fans that are supporting you don't feel like that. They don't. So you can't tell them people that's going to pack the streets down there in Broadway and flood into the Bridgestone on Friday. That we just gonna lay down. We just skating out here to skate. If that's the I, I tell you what, put Pekka back out there. Let's have another round of applause for Pekka. Let's do that again. I, I don't know what else we need to do? Don't waste juice. <laughs> don't don't spill your juice. Don't don't take more tread off his stuff. Come on, man. Like I, I mean, he's he's earning his paycheck. That's that for man, sure. that man he, playing, he's, man. He's about to get paid. Like you just said on that breakaway, dog. I'm I'm sitting there like. Ooh. This game one, they score on that. With a lot of goaltenders, that he, game would have been like four to nothing in the third period. And he righted all his wrongs from game one. I mean, he kept it at one nothing. I mean, shot after shot. Until he got high pulled. High danger chance after high <laughs> danger chance. Until he got pulled, yeah. It's, and then the third goal, there's a lot of guys standing around. I ain't saying, hey, man. So, it's, <laughs> I'm just, hey, man, listen, don't get me fired up, man, and then put – I don't don't bring me down there for that, man, and then cool me off. Don't do that to me. I, I'm that ain't right. I like you fired up because yeah, Don I'm Davenport's just, not All we got is cardboard Don Davenport over there. And she's smiling. What's so funny, Babs? <laughs> we'll be right back. He's going to start trash talking. Her. <laughs> 615-737-1045. The Titan Station. Yes! This is 104.5 The Zone, Nashville. The newest sports bar in Germantown, located right next to the Nashville Sounds Ballpark, is awesome. Third and home. You need to check it out. 
I've got an update for you now. Uh, it was one thing to enjoy watching football at the bar last fall. Loved going over there to get lunch. Um, on what uh, they've got, they've got to have thirty flat screen TVs in that place. It's absolutely amazing. But now that the Nashville Sounds baseball season has begun again, third and home is a whole different animal. If you've never been, it's on the second level of the shared building with Brooklyn Bowl on Third Avenue North, and the space overlooks the beautiful First Horizon Park. They lift up these floor to ceiling garage doors when the weather's great to third and home spacious beer patio. That rivals all the top Nashville rooftop hang hangouts that you've seen. And the patio, when the weather is just right, like a lot of these nights, and when the sounds are on the field, let's just say the place is popping. You can literally see the whole sounds game as if you were sitting in the ballpark. Now, I haven't even mentioned the food, but the word is already spreading about their chicken wings. Um, love them. Um, Slave's got me back on chicken wings. Uh, it's the third home. You need to check them out. Third and home has burgers, flatbread, salads as well, and – a full bar with draft beer, liquor, signature cocktails, open Wednesday through Sunday and during all sounds home games. Check out thirdandhome.com for more information. We'll see you out there, third and home. In any business or endeavor, it's hard to make it to the top. And once you do, staying at the top is so much harder. To be the best, the number one, the industry leader for over a decade is a loud and strong statement.
Michael. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you later. We definitely will. Yeah. You'll be with us live tomorrow. Don't bring that in here. I would like to. Out of um, all due respect. <laughs> I, yeah, please. I'd like to apologize to Babs. Um, before going off the air, I kind of said some harsh things to you, Babs. I apologize. To Cardboard Cutout, Babs? Yeah, I, yeah, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. Yeah, that, there were there yeah. were some listeners that were worried about you. Yeah, they, yeah, they were. And this Babs probably would attack me. But I, me and Babs have a good relationship. So, Babs, I apologize, and we're moving on. Curtis on Twitter, uh, <laughs> at Ron Slate 35, talking smack to hashtag Cardboard Babs. I'd still be nervous. Yeah. See, that's why I got that out the way. Hashtag Cardboard Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Um, we do have, like, I'm flanked by uh, cardboard cutout Blaine Bishop and cardboard cutout Ramon Foster. Sure Ramon are. Foster, uh, watching on YouTube, says, uh, I'm in the building. Look, 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 look. Is he stealing your thing? I, he may be. <laughs> let me see. He sure did say I'm in the building. i tell you a power play I'm going to make today, Brent. I know Ron didn't ride the bike today, so I'm a one-up him. I'm one for one on my one for one on my power plays. What are you riding the bike to work like Debo? Yeah, I, 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 that's my bike. That's my bike. That's my bike, punk. <laughs> Thanks, Ramon. Thanks for one upping me, buddy. That, that that's cool with me. What is, what? So what's going on between you, Ramon, and I ended up on this somehow. You, Ramon, and CJ Watson. Um, we're just motivating each other to um actually get up and do something every day, whether it be ride the peloton or get get some cardio in. And today, guess what? I didn't get to get no cardio in because what were you doing? Um, telling Uncle Tito to get out of my way. So I, I just, I wasn't, um, I wasn't avail- I wasn't able to get up today. <laughs> and Ramon has joined the show. I told my, uh, I told my wife today. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I hadn't had a drink in a while, and uh, I feel so much better when I don't do that. Yeah. But then I had a couple last night. That was good. But then you wake up and you don't want to do anything. Exactly. Right? That's why minute. I just laid there. I, and the air was on blast. Oh, I, I felt good. Felt good in the bed. And today was one of my good sleep-in days. So I, I felt good about sleeping in by myself. I'll get back on it. Get so Ramon is six foot six. Yep. Did we decide, like, he came in saying one of the biggest, he said this on Twitter, one of the biggest lies told on 104.5 The Zone is that Ron Slay is six foot eight. He did say this. And I wish Ramon would call in right now because, um, what what the problem is, Ramon knows I'm taller than him. And we have an ongoing discussion about me being taller. That's why he continues to let his hair grow out. Like you see in the little cutout you're holding. It started to come down to Google today. Like there were Google pe- there yeah, were people Googled. Googling yep. who was taller. Yep. Yep. And I won. Because my thing is, without shoes, I am 6'6 six, six and three quarters. I don't know what that was talking about. But I am 6'6 six, six and three quarters. But So without so- shoes, what is Ramon? Ramon, that's a good question. Ramon, because, yeah, you need to call. He said, do I need to call? Yeah, because I need to – I think Ramon is six – I don't know. He said he was 6'6". Six, because six. with his cleats on, he's 6'8", easily. You yeah. realize that we're the only radio station in the country that could not do the whole NFL combine stuff because we actually have former NFL players and former basketball players here that would actually dominate in that stuff Oh yeah, we because wish of how tall and good you guys actually are at sports. We wish they would. Mr. Uh, Cables, Moan's violence button is stuck on on today. Yeah, it is. And I'm, I, I love when it is. Well, uh, whatever uh, Uncle Sunflower's doing, or uh, that's uh, <laughs> what Mr. Cables calls him. Let's go to G Money in the meantime, uh, as I hold the Ramon cardboard cutout on the Zone TV feed. G Money, what's up? Hey, what, what's what's going on? I'm, I was starting to get a little concerned and, and needed to wonder if I need to come down there and have a, an intervention with Ron. Uh, because my man, Ron, said he was put in ballet. That's one thing. And then I thought I heard him say he was trying to put him on the glass. And I'm like, man, we just going to put him on the glass. Where's Ron? What are we doing down there, man? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you no. all right, bro? Like, hey. you know, I need to do the first thing to pull up on you real quick. Hey, man, you know I mean, hey. <laughs> I ain't I'm going to make sure you are all right, man. Blink <laughs> twice on the camera if you need help or something, man. This, this is unbecoming of you, brother. I ain't, yeah. I ain't, no. Blink twice on the camera. I'm going to get out. Huh? I'm trying to get out. Hey, man. Get out, yeah, look, unlock the door. How please, about that? Please unlock the door. Get me out the building. <laughs> ain't no doubt. 
Yeah, that's all I want to say. But I, okay, I'm just checking on you. Make all sure right. you're good. No, Brent, all good. Just, hey, let them go, Brent. All right. Hey, <laughs> man, see, it's all good, man. This, it, you might have caught the story late, man. Brent was asking about, um, I, I alluded to me being put in the ballet when I was younger at about 11 or 12 by my mom, and then also tap dancing, which lasted both about one or two weeks. So but I did, we were talking about footwork. That's how we got into that, you know, footwork on the basketball court, footwork in football, whatever it may be. Um, but as an athlete, having great footwork, and that's where it came from. So. wonder if this guy had good footwork. Tough. Ramon Foster, did you ever go to ballet <laughs> lessons? No. Brent. I'm going to be honest. You know Ron is my brother. All of these things he's ever done, I've never heard of him run. <laughs> Tap dancing, ballet, Yoto. horseback riding, bareback, okay? Yeah. Like, seriously, <laughs> what haven't you done? Hey, man. It's, 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 it's going to be a time for us to get into all these stories. He didn't share these stories while he was laying on the floor about to pass out? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. I didn't. I was too busy trying to borrow his Mercedes at the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at least you put a blanket on him. I, he did He did cover me up and kept rolling and went on to, went on the workouts that but, morning. <laughs> so I was like, Ron, can I borrow the car? The keys on the counter. That's all I heard. <laughs> hey, okay, this is what we got we to gotta figure out, Mom, real quick. Okay. At the, at the, at at how in the camp in 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 pre draft camp or whatever what your combine, how tall were you listed? Shoes off. I was seriously straight up like we six ain't, five we ain't six five and five eight. See, okay, cool. So with mine off, I was so, six six. So you're only about an inch shorter than Ron. Is that where we are with this? Not Brent. No, not even a whole inch. Come on now, Brent. Don't do that. <laughs> Now, see, I told I told Brent Moan, that's why you keep letting your hair grow out. Because you don't want you trying, <laughs> oh. you trying to get that you trying to get that. I want to know how uh, fast he ran the 40 Brent. at the NFL combine. I've got that pulled up too. Oh, my boy's a speech. Yeah, team. that if if you ever notice when we take pictures, Ron always put his shoulder, <laughs> put his elbow on my shoulder to try to push me down. I'm not- <laughs> Why is Ron always trying to hold you back, Ramon? That's my guy. Dog, I have no idea, Brent. But... See, see, now, uh, Ramon, I'm going to interrupt you. See, some would look at it as holding him back. I look at it as holding my dog down. That's all, you know what I mean? That's a different. That's a different. I'm holding him down. Hey. They're both negative things. <laughs> uh, some to some. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. <laughs> That's how you say it. Hey. Right. It is. But look, Ron, we, we'll stand side by side, and you'll see. Like, Ron got the little peak in the top of his head. It's one of those, like, you drive a race car off the top of his head. That's what he got going for him. <laughs> That's the only reason he's taller than me, Brent. I got to throw that out there. I've never noticed that before. Hey, man, don't listen to Ramon, man. <laughs> All right, Raymond, we're out of here. His head does, his hey, head does go I mean, Ramon. I meant Ramon. I meant Ramon. All right, all right. We'll see how I torture you on social media now because I'm, <laughs> I'm in the boom boom room. No, you got to ride with your dog. We got somebody else to handle right now. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm with you. All right. Great show, fellas. Here, there he is. My man. Hey, next segment, I'm going to bring cardboard cutout Blaine Bishop into the man, We got everybody we got joining everybody. the show. Hey, also, uh, where will Julio Jones be in 2021? The King weighed in. Oh, really? The King Wonder what he had to say. In. That's next on 104.5 The Zone. Off season. Yeah, like that exists. We have no idea what you're talking about. The Titan Station. Brilliant. 104.5 The Zone. Go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle, car, truck, SUV, or Jeep. They will be able to hook you up. Maybe you've been thinking about getting out from under those repair bills. Maybe you've got a payment that you need adjusted uh, with, with something newer, something you can count on. Maybe you need more room. I don't know. Uh, trust the guys at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. I bought multiple vehicles from these guys. They're awesome people. 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee. About 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Best car buying experience you'll ever have. Go take your test drive. Go inside. They'll help make the numbers work. It'll be that easy. You can check them out online right now. GuptonMotors.com is the website. You can check out the entire inventory there. Every, every bit of the dealership information is there as well. Check them out, GuptonMotors.com, 3450 Tom Austin Highway, about 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. That's Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. This is Jim Rome with the CBS Sports Minute, sponsored by NetSuite by Oracle. Receive your...
southbound at Lebanon Road have a crash in that direction and another by the airport at Donaldson Pike at I-40. Also, Central Pike at Old Hickory Boulevard working on a crash through there as well as over in East Nashville at Lishy Avenue east of Trinity Lane. Also be on the lookout for a crash still in town at 4th Avenue at Peabody Street. I'm Joshua McClay with traffic on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. From the Mark Spain Real Estate Studios, your home for Titans in Falls football. 104.5 The Zone. WGFX Gallatin, Nashville. Accumulus Station. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Get ready because after no events last basketball season, ESPN has announced that they are bringing back the early season tournaments, including the Maui Invitational, Battle of Atlantis, and one that is going to be called the ESPN Events Invitational, which is going to include a field that has Kansas, Alabama, Iona, and Belmont in it. That tournament is going to be taking place in Orlando, and it is going to kick off or tip off on Thanksgiving Day. The Tennessee Vols have added some depth to their linebacker core. Earlier today, former Michigan Wolverine William Mohan announced that he will be transferring to Knoxville. He's a former three-star linebacker out of high school. Played last year for the Wolverines. Got into one game and had one tackle, but obviously with the 2020 rule, he has all of his eligibility remaining. Earlier, we told you about the Tennessee Vols taking their last road trip. Well, Vanderbilt has their last home series this weekend as they host the Kentucky Wildcats tonight through Saturday. Vanderbilt currently has the second best record in the SEC, and depending on what happens in South Carolina, could be the number one seed in the SEC tournament coming up next week for all of your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit USSTN.com breaking news at once for your home for the Titans and Vols this is 104.5 The Zone The 3HL with Brent Doherty Ron's already had a little uh, beef with cardboard Don Davenport, yeah. but you made up with yes, her. I think I everything's apologize. good. I apologize. And I told her, I, I'll bring you some cardboard wings, too. Cardboard baps. <laughs> and everything will be all right. At 3HL 1045, you can get us on Twitter. We're watching the PGA Championship, and uh, Ron and I were just talking. Wouldn't you love to play alongside these guys? Just give a couple extra slots and just see, you know, with the conditions while they're playing, how we would do? I, I would, but only if they were drinking with me. If they're going to be serious, no. They gotta play around with me. They can't. They can't be serious. With me. I well, think like he wants to get them drunk. Yes. <laughs> like each 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 well, I mean, stroke John, they beat me, they gotta do that many funnels. <laughs> funnels, not shots. Yeah, not they a got shot. A funnel no, they got beer. a funnel. I yeah. think John. Reach out to John Daly. He, you know, I think we can take get me him down him Does he do that anyway? <laughs> he yeah. probably does. He'll take me down. I went to that. the Masters one time, and there he was sitting up in the parking lot selling t-shirts, <laughs> smoking a cigar. <laughs> I know that dude is it. Hey, I got. I, did I tell you I got to meet um. Red Arbeck? Red Arbeck. Yeah. Oh, Curveball. The, the cigar got you. Yep, the cigar. That's where they came from. Okay. Yeah. Why'd yeah, you meet Red cool. I was uh, working out at American University. No, that, it's not the one in D.C. What's the name of the, the college in D.C.? Uh, Georgetown? Like George Washington? Not not George Washington. It's Georgetown. right around the corner from Georgetown. Kermit Washington went there. I think Pan it is American, American University. <laughs> it, it's something like that. It's, um, I think it's American University, if I am mistaken. If it's not that, that's what it is. I was working out with Kermit Washington and... He's real good friends with Red Arbeck at the time. Kermit Washington, the guy that decked Rudy Tomjanovich, Mm -hmm. the greatest sports punch ever. Mm -hmm. It is American. Yep. It's it's American University, isn't it? American University. Played there from 70 to 73. Yep. And was up there working out, and he had a clinic, and Red Arbeck was sitting in the stands, and you could not smoke in arenas at that time. Right. And Red was up there lighting up his cigar, and he brought me up there to meet him. He didn't care. No. Watch me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There was a guy that worked for the Vault Network named Bobby Denton. That was the same uh-huh. way. Um, Just fired up. He would smoke a cigar anywhere. Like I, I met him at the uh, Cumulus, what, what's now Cumulus Radio Stations in Knoxville, and mm-hmm. he was in the general manager's office talking with everybody, and he was, I mean, lit up cigar right That's there. That's crazy. That's wild. It's funny, like, guys like that that have, like, I mean, just. That stature. They have a zero Fs given. I mean, What you going to tell them? Hey, yeah. man, hey, come on, Red. You got to put that. What? You can't put do it that out. Well, I'll well, I, well, I leave. Oh, no, please don't leave. Please. 
Uh, PGA Championship, uh, one, two, three, four, five golfers are tied for the lead. Keegan Bradley, Hovland, Brooks Kepka is there, Aaron Wise, Brandon Grace. Um, let's see some other I, – I did see um, – so Todd Furman yesterday, he gave us three golfers. And Daniel Berger, plus five after seven. So that's not mm-hmm. a good one for Furman there. Tyrell Hatton was minus one, tied for 13th. That's pretty good. That is good. Tommy Fleetwood plus one through eight, so we'll keep up with him. But uh, Fleetwood was the dog horse. He's he's really good. He's yeah, really good. Okay. But um, we'll, we'll keep up with him. And and that's that's the fun part about betting golf is like finding three dudes and just, just riding, riding with them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now you can go like this guy against this guy, even though it has nothing to do with the tournament. Right. And you can bet that way, which is fun. But yeah, that's your assignment, Joe Hunk is. Um, <laughs> John Daly. Yeah, get him. He actually follows us on Twitter, so you can send him a message. Oh, then that should be easy. I don't know why he follows us on Twitter. What do you mean? This is is 3HL. (laughs) (laughs) It's that simple. You got Blaine sitting, but you got the hitman sitting beside you. You just had Ramon by you. Look at Blaine Bishop. Yeah. Zone TV crew can look at Blaine Bishop. The cardboard cutout. Hashtag Um, for the shoe. Sitting right here on my knee. He called me short yesterday. Blaine called you short? Yes. He walked in because he was actually here doing something. He looked at me and goes, I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> Seriously? Hitman. The hitman. <laughs> you need to see, to, to, to Ron's point about Ramon, you need to let that mohawk keep growing. Yep. I See, yeah. and, that's, and that's why I'm you wearing the hats now. It's because I actually need to get it cut. You said that, it. too. I did. You, you haven't even been here two weeks. People are going at you. <laughs> for real. Buck went Buck? at you today, I heard. I didn't right hear in. it. I no. heard he did. I was driving and I actually got off on the on the Franklin exit, the one where the party was that I was supposed to go to. And and I was there and I started getting tweets from people saying, Buck, just because you said that on the air, I'm giving Joe Hunk a follow. Right. I was like, I don't know what happened, but I've gotten a follow on Twitter and yeah, I appreciate it, it. And then they said that he was attacking the Mohawk at my age. Right after it. Coming at the home. Come on. They come out Just home. because I but, said he was an attention whore. Oh, well, yeah, you did say that. So there should be some retribution, to be fair to Buck. But, hey, Buck, let Joe be Joe. Please. Right? Yeah, let, let, let Slay be Slay. Hashtag. Duval. Did you think six months ago that you would be, like, oh, on the radio every day just irate over the Preds giving up a third goal? <laughs> no. I didn't have any idea that I would be talking about the Preds. The, the way thing I'm about talking it, about before the, the season even started, no. you were there was no thought in your mind that at some point in time this season you were going to be getting angry because of a sound clip that we played after you just went on a rant. By no stretch of the imagination. I love it. It's funny no how like the emergence of Ron Slay on 104.5 The Zone happened because it was so organic. Yeah, it was. And what what happened with you was, and I haven't talked with you about this, but um, I'm sure it went down like that. Like, Bill King was a guy I worked with early on in my career, and he told me never say no to an opportunity to be on the air. Mm-hmm. Never say no. And so, like, whenever they needed you to fill in for whomever, you did it. So, Let's like, roll. you've been on every day part on this station. <laughs> Let's roll. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now you're fired up about the Preds every and, day. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Ready to have your belly on the glass at Bridgestone. Hey, man, I'm, that lets you know I am all in. All in. And if you hear me periodically throughout this show saying hashtag something, this is all because of my guy, Will Bowling. That was my last part of my Predators rant. Because when it was 1-0, he put hashtag let's go Canes. And we got an ongoing debate, which they covered in J. Martin Ramon this morning. But to catch everybody up to speed, he put "Let's go Canes," and I said that's a problem. Which his point was that's Which, that's the playoff hashtag yep. for Carolina, but that doesn't help the radio station at all. No, by no stretch but of the imagination. You you were fired up about that yesterday, oh. and it's funny for for those that don't know, which I'm sure you don't. Um, we have a tech strand for the, all the hosts and the producers, and and Will and 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 Rhett and uh, all Man-to-man. these guys, mm-hmm. and so. Will Bowling took it today. He got put in kangaroo court yeah. on that on that text train. Yep. He took it. And I'm, I don't let up. And I'm not letting up. I let up soon, though. But 
<laughs> not right now, though. Jason on uh, on YouTube says Dawn's been smiling the entire stream. She has. Have She's you in a very good happy? mood today. That's the yes, happiest is. we've seen her since I it started. Is. It is. And with no mask. Hey, Babs, Auburn sucks. <laughs> Look, she's still smiling. <laughs> uh, Brit, uh, let's see. Bleacher Report Gridiron uh, <laughs> threw out a picture of Julio Jones with Rumor Mill. It says, comment what team would be most dangerous with Julio. Derrick Henry retweeted and wrote, Titan TF up. Mm. The king has spoken. Hey, man. Where are we with the Julio Jones thing? Hey, well, if the I, king I, wants him, we need to get to the front of the line, right? Yeah, it's only a couple apple sauces left at the front of that line. You better get up and get one. King yeah. want one. Yeah, maybe one of those cardboard chocolate milks. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was so. Good. That rectangle road pizza. Them chocolate milks were. Warm. Those chocolate milks. I mean, oh, that, it was hey, something different. That was worth something at school. Yes, it was. Those were something different, boy. Woo we and them rectangular pieces. But look, it's funny because. The talk about Julio Jones had died down, and Diana Rossini came on Buck, Buck's show and said, 100%, he's not going to die. Right. But then you get a comment like this. It makes me wonder, man. What's going on? The, the funny thing about the king is, and we're talking about Derrick Henry, if, mm-hmm. you're, if you're wondering. The funny thing about the king is, the king doesn't talk very often. No, he don't. So when the king talks, you kind of got to listen, don't he you? He ain't going to come into the podium for, uh, for, for something that's, that's meaningful. And this right here is meaningful to the king. I don't know where I stand on the Julio Jones thing. Like, I would love to see him just because of because of what we do. You mm-hmm. cheer for the story, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a really big story. Right. How much does he have left in the tank is one thing. And what do you what do you have to give up? You're going to have to give up the first round. And you got to restructure some contracts. You're going to have to restructure. I think they're but you've position- been saying that from the, the get go. I think they're in a position where they're going to have to restructure contracts anyway. And mm-hmm. you're going to have to do all this before June 1st. Yeah. So June 1st is the day with Julio. That's in a minute. Atlanta can't get rid of him until then. That's in a minute. And you know, I mean, they're they're saying like the people that cover the Falcons are saying it's not a done deal that he'll be. I think it is. Yeah. You you don't have this much smoke with somebody. Without their being fired. And my thing is, like, we need someone. We got not, – not we need. We got to have someone. Yeah, and they haven't done anything at wide receiver. Exactly. Really. And that's not no so, knock on Josh Reynolds and all these guys that no. come in, Des Fitzpatrick. All of them are promising, but we need that guy. I really thought that was a golf club that you were holding. It, it is. is. What in the world? I'm working Thank on my- you. I asked him that when he walked in the building earlier. It looks like it has a bend in the middle of it. Yep, doing the show, I'm working on my grip. <laughs> okay. Greg Cosell coming up next. We're going to talk about the draft picks and how they fit in. We'll ask him about Julio Jones. And uh, we'll, we'll go back in time and talk about yeah. some some old school football. We had Clyde Simmons on yesterday. And uh, you were talking about him and your uh, godfather, which I didn't even know, Richard Dent. Look at you, wink at me. A lot, a lot you don't know is to unpack. I mean, just later. things just things get unpacked daily from Ron. I'm going to stop unpacking them. Um, so we'll talk about the old school stuff there. Uh, that that Eagles defense, that Buddy Ryan coach, that Bears defense in the mid '80s, um, and we'll get his take on that. All that coming up. Stay tuned. Three HL one zero four five. The zone. Your Nashville Predators are in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and Nashville's first chance to react after every game with Will Bowling on one zero four five. The Zone TV. This is your home for the best Predators playoff coverage. One zero four five. The Zone. All right, we're talking about playoffs on the ice, playoffs on the hardwood. The NBA play-in tournament gives some teams one last shot to make the playoffs. Everyone can bet this round, though, risk-free on FanDuel Sportsbook. It doesn't matter if you are new to FanDuel or if you already have an account. FanDuel has teamed up with basketball legends Charles Barkley, War Eagle, and Kenny Smith to make sure that you will get your money back if you don't win. So that's any user, any bet type, any game. How about that? I love the same game parlay, too, by the way. The NBA play-in tournament going down May 18th through the 21st, and FanDuel just made it even more exciting. It's all a part of FanDuel's play-in palooza. So if you already have a FanDuel Sportsbook account, open up the app, opt in, claim your free risk-free bet. And if you're new to FanDuel, sign up with promo code DAWN, D-A-W-N, to get your first bet risk-free up to $1,000. That is exclusively 
on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. You must be 21 and older and present in Tennessee. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in seven days. New user risk-free bet for first real money wager only. And refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. If you have a gambling problem, call or text the Tennessee Red Line, 1-800-889-9789. Some things are just true. Like Geico makes it easy to save on boat insurance. And also, a long boat ride is way better than a long car ride.
I know she wishes she was here to talk with her beloved Greg Cosell. Greg, what's up? How are you? I know. Yeah, I, I guess she just doesn't like me anymore, huh, Brent? <laughs> That's usually how I look at things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, I didn't bring this up to you on text message, but Derek Henry just tweeted. Uh, he retweeted a, a Bleacher Report. Uh, which team do you think Julio Jones should play for in 2021? And, and Derek Henry retweeted and wrote, Titan TF up. Um, which, <laughs> as we said, the king doesn't speak very often. Um, so when the king speaks, we all kind of pay attention. Um, so you're actually acting like he knows something that we don't know? <laughs> no, I'm not going there. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm usually careful about things that Derrick Henry says and does because I don't want to get um, stiff arm <laughs> because I've seen the violence that goes along with that. Well, you know, my guess is, and I, they're probably friends because they're they're both from Alabama. But my guess is that he really doesn't have any idea. And when all said and done. Um, there's no way he could really have any idea because I don't think Tulio is going to control that. I think the Falcons are probably going to control that. Yep. And uh, we've got, to, they've got a, they can't do anything until June one anyway. So uh, it, it will be interesting to, to see where he lands. He's such a freak. Um, we went to a, a Titans uh, Falcons group practice session and, and just walking next to that guy. It, it's no, just, no. It's you know, the interesting thing though, he's, He's starting to get older, and, and I mean, yeah. there's no question you're dealing with the first ballot Hall of Famer. That's not my point, but teams have to make these kinds of decisions, and they're very, very hard to make, particularly with a player who played his entire career in one city and has been such a good player and very representative of the city, just a class act. But he's an older player who's starting to get nagging minor injuries, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they get in return. Right. So in terms of in terms of fit, um, wh- how would you envision if if it were to happen? How would you envision Julio Jones in that Titan system? Well, I think ultimately Julio Jones, <laughs> at his best, can pretty much do anything as he's shown throughout his career. Um, you know, the question is they've pretty much established that AJ Brown is is the X receiver, meaning he's the single receiver to the short side of the field, to the boundary side of the field. Now, Julio's done that a good good part of his career. Uh, He certainly can do other things, as A.J. Brown can as well. Um, Don't forget that for most of his career in college, A.J. Brown played in the slot. Um, He's not going to move exclusively into the slot in the NFL with the Titans, but he's certainly capable of moving around and playing other positions. But uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, I'm very curious to see what teams will be in the running and what teams will feel that they're going to give up for a – is Julio 32? I believe that's how old he is, is he not? Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, given the, the, the sort of lingering injury history that started to crop up a little bit, I mean, obviously the guy's a freak, always has been. Well, Greg, we're we're starting to settle in in a sense because we're coming out of rookie minicamp, getting ready to get the vets inside. But out coming out of rookie minicamp, you got a guy like Des Fitzpatrick. We know we got to do something with the receiver spot um, outside of Josh Reynolds and guys that they're trying to bring in. What do you see Des Des Fitzpatrick doing well to fit in with this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty interesting receiving core. I, I like Des Fitzpatrick, uh, as you guys know, when, when the draft occurred. In fact, I remember, I think I texted Brent right when they made the pick, how much I liked him. Yeah, um, did. Yeah, I, 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 you know, he's, he's got that desirable size, stride length, build-up speed, hands, body control, competitiveness profile, Ron. I mean, he's, to me, he's just not a purely explosive guy. Um, but he's almost 6'2", he's 208 pounds. He, for whatever it's worth, his measurables were pretty darn good at his pro day, uh, particularly his 40-yard dash time. I guess is his 40 uh, was probably better than many thought. Uh, I, I think he's a really intriguing prospect. But when you look at their receiving core as a whole, uh, let's assume Des Fitzpatrick can play meaningful snaps as a rookie. And that remains to be seen. Um, but let's assume that's the case. Um, if that's so, then you're dealing with A.J. Brown, who's clearly a great player. Um, you're dealing with uh, Reynolds, who's a really intriguing player to me, particularly in this offense, working off play action, because mm-hmm. Reynolds is a, is a long-striding type guy with vertical ability. 
Um, and the play-action pass game presents those kinds of plays. And then you have Des Fitzpatrick. So I, I think it's going to be really interesting uh, to see. And Fitzpatrick is the wild card here. You know, we essentially know what A.J. Brown is. For the most part, we know what Reynolds is. Reynolds will obviously become more of a volume target in Tennessee than he was uh, with the Rams. But um, Fitzpatrick's the wild card. You know, it's funny, uh, talking about Fitzpatrick, that's the one guy that people came back from rookie minicamp uh, talking about, mm-hmm. how how he looked the part. Now, obviously, he does. You, you know, you're not, you're not doing all that much during rookie minicamp, but, but um, you know, as, uh, you know, I, I think it's impressive what he did at Louisville, given the quarterback situation uh, after Lamar left. Yeah, I mean they they struggled at quarterback. They they uh, they really couldn't find one. Um, I think they had a big time recruit who who didn't work out. If I recall, I think it was his name was Juwan Pass. He didn't work out. Um, but he you know he played four years in college, which um, uh, you know is, is rare. And he, he averaged uh, eighteen nineteen yards of reception in his last two seasons. Um, you know, he was he was a pretty big time recruit. He came out of high school in Michigan, but um, was not recruited really by SEC schools. So uh, ended up at Louisville. But he's I liked him a lot. I liked his tape, as as I think I told you. I watched his 2019 tape and his right. 2020 tape, and and I liked him both years. So you got a guy. Speaking of being able to contribute to the wide receiving core, you got a guy, Racy McMath. Do we expect him to? Go since he's played special teams at LSU. Do we expect him to transition there first, or or just be able to get in this receiver core and get in this rotation to help out? Well, I, I think Ryan, you have to look at his college career. He, for whatever reason, it didn't work out at LSU in terms of becoming a a meaningful part of their um, pass game. Right. You know, he didn't catch many balls. Um, he predominantly lined up as the boundary X, the single receiver to the short side of the field. He's a size speed guy. Um, he ran really well uh, at his pro day. Um, he's an intriguing guy because you know, and it's the reason he's a later round pick because there's a contradictory nature uh, with his physical traits, but his alarming lack of production. Mm-hmm. So those are the guys you draft on the third day. You look at the traits and say, wow, he's got size, he's got speed, he's got an athletic profile. Um, but then you look at the total lack of production uh, at a school the last two years that threw the ball a ton. But you come away watching his tape, Ron, believing there is something to work with. You just have to try to figure out why those higher level traits didn't really come out in college. So, sure, is he going to get uh, reps uh, at wide receiver? Of course he is, but I'm not sure you can count on him right away for this given season. T- tell us more about Caleb Farley. Obviously, uh, just staying away from the medicals, um, but, but a six foot two cornerback that has limited experience at the position, but yep. did start a bunch of games in those two years there. Um, so you can kind of tell that he's a great athlete, right? Moving from wide receiver to corner and to first round draft pick. Oh, he is a great athlete. That the tape tells you that. I mean, he is. He's got size. He's got athleticism. Um, even though he came in at under two hundred at his pro day, he's got a strong looking frame. I don't know what what it looked like to you guys. You know, seeing. Uh, well, I guess he's he he didn't take part, correct? Uh, he, yeah, he was yeah. he was there, but no. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he's a solidly built kid. He's got powerful explosive movement traits. You can just see it in the way in which he moves. There's there's kind of a, you know, he, he's, he's built differently. Uh, even though he weighs less than Patrick Sertan, he almost looks more powerful just in the way in which he's built. Um, huh. So uh, you can easily see the great athletic and movement traits. Uh I just hope he stays healthy because I think that he's he's really got a chance to be a, a big time corner. Um, but he'll need some more experience. He hasn't played a lot of. He was a high school quarterback. Mm. Mm. I mean, from high school quarterback to wide receiver in college to cornerback right. in college to first round draft pick. At That's pretty good. Two. That's special. And he <laughs> would have been drafted higher. He wouldn't have been there for the uh, Titans if there were there was no injury concern. Spot on, right there, Greg. That is spot on, right there. Safety. 
looking at a guy like Brady Breeze, what, what do you see him? Yeah, I did. he's the one guy, Ron, that, uh, and I'm just being honest, you, you know, Brett knows me for longer than you do. I don't talk about things I don't know about. Mm-hmm. He's the one love. guy I did not see from the draft class because okay. so, he didn't play this year, yeah. and I just didn't get around to him because I knew he wasn't necessarily going to be a, you know, a higher pick, so I just didn't get around to him. Well, let's, let's come in a little bit. Let's look at a guy like Monty Rice. Oh, Monty Rice, I did see a ton of. I mean, you know, uh, he was a pretty, uh, you know, pretty important player on, on our, you know, good Georgia defense, and Georgia usually gets players. Um, I thought Monty Rice was a really, really good box linebacker. Not a bad athlete. You know, he ran well, actually, at his pro day, but he didn't play as a great athlete. He struck me as a really good base defense uh, stacked backer. Um, I thought that was his best attribute. I thought he had really good play recognition and reaction. What a lot of people like to throw out is instincts, but it's really a function of, of play recognition and reaction. Um, thought he had a really good feel for navigating and working through traffic to make tackles in the run game. Yeah. Um, not sure when I finished watching his tape and I saw a lot of Georgia tape, not sure watching his tape if he could be a a sub package linebacker um which they don't need him to be this year um you know he kind of struck me uh, as for people who follow the league closely you think of an anthony walker who was with the colts now with the browns who's kind of a base defense linebacker damian wilson who was on the uh, chiefs the last couple of years now he's with the cowboys these guys are important players to defenses they're just not necessarily going to play on third down Staying with the uh, staying with the draft picks, uh, Dylan Radins, uh, an offensive tackle. When they drafted him, Greg, honestly, I knew nothing about that guy. And, and the more I saw from him, tape wise, and read about him, uh, the more I thought he might fit, maybe as a swing guy. I know uh, you talked about him maybe uh, playing inside. Uh, yeah, I mean that's NFL the way I saw. I, hey, I'm not a, I'm not an offensive line guru, so you know I could be dead wrong. Um, you know, a lot of people saw him as a great athlete. Uh, I did not see him as a great athlete, but um, I guess we'll see. I mean, I, my guess is he was drafted to play on the outside for, for the uh, uh, Titans. Right. Is that where he played during the, the mini camp? Uh, yes. Yeah, that would be my guess. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, I think that he's a really uh, – efficient fundam- fundamentally sound kind of player that to me is what he is um i did not think that you know i thought he was a little stiff but you know i've also read people i respect say that they thought he was a really good athlete so maybe i'm wrong you know it certainly wouldn't be the first time but i thought that um he might struggle in pass protection on the edge um but again now you're dealing with the style of offense they're, the the Titans are not a drop back passing team. They're for the most part. They're, their offense is built on the run. They're they're when they try to push the ball down the field, unless it's obviously third and long. Um, what they try to do is do it with what we call shot plays, and shot plays normally have six or seven man pass protection concepts. So you're not asking your tackles to necessarily have to pass protect against a a really good edge rusher for three seconds. So you know, he might work very well as a tackle in with this team. Now, obviously, Taylor Lewan's back, so he's not going to be a left tackle here. Mm-hmm. Now, Greg, let, let let me ask you this: If everything goes to goes as expected, everybody's healthy, guys. You know, they 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 pick up the playbook, they pick up the schemes, and everything as they should. Who do you think of the diamond in the rough would be outside of a guy like Caleb Farley, between a guy like Elijah Molden? and Rashad Weaver, who would have a greater impact, you believe? Well, I loved Elijah Molden's tape. Loved his mm-hmm. tape. Right. I think I think he's a really, really good player. Um, I think he's sudden. I think he's explosive. The only thing to me he lacked was, was a long speed. Uh, but I thought that you could line him up as a slot corner. I think you can line him up as a safety. Um to me, the way he could be deployed, and again, I'm not saying he's this player right now, but to me, the way he could be deployed in a defense, and maybe not week one as a rookie, but you know, is 
is like a Taran Matthew or a Buda Baker. I, he struck me as that kind of player watching his tape. Really liked his tape. Um, just loved his competitiveness, his toughness. Uh, yeah, I think he's a really, really good football player. Well, those, All right. are, those are two great names mm-hmm. that people would get excited about. <laughs> Man, I want to ask Greg, would he throw Clyde Simmons on the end of this? <laughs> well, I remember Clyde from the days, you know, he was here with Buddy Ryan and he, with the 46 defense, you know, that was, uh, I mean, that was a really, really good defense. Which one, which, real quick, uh, we got to get out of here. Uh, we're going to let you go, Greg, but which one you picking between that, that 85 Bears and uh, let's say 91, 92 Eagles? No. Oh. Yeah, Clyde had 19 sacks in 92. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I told him yesterday the Titans had 19 last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough call. I mean, I can't remember every player uh, yeah. on on each defense, you know, all eleven starters. Right. But that was that's a a tough defense. Don't forget when it first started with Buddy Ryan in Chicago. It actually started just a little piece of history here. It actually started for the first time in 1981 against Dan Fouts and Air Coriel. And I think if people were to look up that game, they'd find that Fouts was something like 14 for 43 in the game. Wow. And that's when the 43, the 46 defense really started. I, I believe it was 1981 against the Chargers. So in, in basic terms, what what was the 46? Design. The 46 had six guys on the line of scrimmage. Um, it, basically, it was a reduced front where the center and the two guards were covered. You had an edge pass rusher who was Richard Dent with the Bears, and he was he was in a wide position working against an offensive tackle to the weak side of the offensive formation. You had the two outside linebackers on the line of scrimmage to the strong side of the formation. And then you had the Mike linebacker and the strong safety essentially as stacked backers. So it was an eight-man box with a six-man first-level front, and you didn't know who was going to come. So you always had to be prepared for six possible rushers and maybe more. Because one thing about Buddy Ryan, he believed in going after the quarterback even if he left voids in coverage because he believed you were going to speed up the quarterback to such an extent that he would not be able to find the voids in coverage in time. Blaine Bishop told a story, uh, and certainly he can tell it better than me, but when he went to Houston, he said Buddy Ryan was running that defense, Kevin Gilbride was running the offense, and, and, and Buddy would, like, if he felt like they weren't getting the proper work done, he would just pull the defense off the field and said, you guys, you guys stink on offense, we're going in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, well, as we know, uh, they did not seem to get along great. <laughs> I told Slays that he's got to Google that. Fight on the as, I, as I recall, they did not seem to get along great, yes. <laughs> um, hey, Greg, always enjoy the visits, man. Appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Greg Cosell from NFL Films, at Greg Cosell on Twitter. He is the best. When we come back, there's a guy named Matt Williamson that ranked Derrick Henry the fifth best running back <laughs> coming into 2021. We'll ask him why next on 104.5 The Zone. <laughs> Buck Rising is the local Titans know-it-all for Guy, the Buck Rising Show. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on 104.5 The Zone. You know what else is uh, sweeping the nation, at least sweeping Middle Tennessee, is somebody that you can trust to take care of your HVAC. And the only one I will recommend is... My Complete Comfort Solutions, your complete heating and cooling solution. They serve all of Middle Tennessee. Best referral I have ever gotten. Kevin with Complete Comfort Solutions HVAC. Maybe your air conditioner unit was limping along at the end of last summer. So you know coming in, you're going to need a new unit. And maybe you can't really afford it right now. I get it. Give Kevin at Complete Comfort Solutions a call because they offer a no credit check financing plan so you can get your unit when you need it most and then pay it off. 615 668 Four seven eight four is Kevin's number. You can also catch him online at mycompletecomfortsolutions.com. Proud dealer for American Standard and Mitsubishi Diamond. Complete Comfort HVAC. They are your complete heating and cooling solution. I've had Kevin out to replace uh, two of my units, and he is professional, is not going to try and outsell you something. Kevin will take care of you, I promise. Give him a call, My Complete Comfort Solution, 615-668-4784. Asking to see a flat screen TV, only to have the salesperson tell you he didn't have any in stock, but he could get one brought in for you? It's ridiculous, right? But it happens every day.
you think, hey, we played better, you don't say it. Like, you don't uh, say we played well when nope. you lost. No, nope, because you didn't. You lost. I mean, I get the process. I'm a process guy. But at this point, it's a results business. And what's funny? In the playoffs. <laughs> you you said this at the start of this. A series goes up and down like this right here, especially in hockey. They're, ch- they're, cha- they're chapters so, of a book in hockey. Yep. So I can't wait. Each game is different. Um, let's let's dive back into the NFL. Matt Williamson with Pro Football uh, Network is uh, with us now. Matt, what's up? How are you, man? I am fantastic. How are you guys doing? We're, we're we're doing good. It's list season, and you're all over it, and uh, we're enjoying the lists. I will tell you this, and I'm sure you know this as you come on the radio in Nashville. Your running back list got a little reaction in the Music City. <laughs> I had a feeling, yeah. So mm-hmm. Derrick Henry, fifth-rated running back, coming into the 2021 season i guess the obvious first question is why it's a long conversation really and we can dig into it as much as you guys want i love henry he's a phenomenal player he's led the league in rushing two years in a row he's unique he is awful to play against but (laughs) the short answer is the four people ahead on them on the list alvin cook christian mccaffrey saquon barkley alvin kamara are exceptional pass-catching backs. They're just more well-rounded. Um, I, I think Henry's effective in the screen game, but he's not a route runner whatsoever. Right. And to be very honest with you, if this was 1985, he'd be first on my list, but that's not how the game's played nowadays. He is kind of a throwback, isn't he? And and it's it's funny, yeah. like because you could look at it one of two ways, because – you know, it, it could be even more impressive that he led the NFL in rushing because he is a two-down back, um, which, you know, a lot of people think sh- should cause him to be a little higher on said mm-hmm. list. But I get what you're saying sure. in terms of the pass game as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the only knock on the guy is, well, uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll <laughs> hit him a little harder too. I, I do think I looked at the, all these players at all these different positions yeah. sort of in a vacuum. I mean, I, I didn't give them extra credit for their surroundings. I think Henry benefits a great deal from Tennessee devising their offense around him, you know, getting a lot of big, heavy, run-blocking offensive linemen, creating great opportunities for him. That's not his fault at all. He, I mean, he is taking that and running with it. But I look at, like, Dalvin Cook, who's right ahead of him on my list, their offensive line in Minnesota was really, really poor. And with their first round pick, they grabbed an offensive tackle with their third round pick. They grabbed a guard and cook still excelled. Now would Henry excel in Minnesota? Of course he would. He's phenomenal, but he, his path to being a superstar, which he absolutely is, is just a little more narrow than those other guys. Now, let me ask you this, Matt. Um, the, the availability being your best ability a couple of the guys you got ahead of them uh, wasn't available. If, now, is this, yeah. this list based on their total body of work or last year coming into this year? I think that's my biggest question. That's a great – I knew somebody was going to ask me that because yeah. Henry's durability, reliability, despite his workload and the punishment he takes is really remarkable, especially at that position. And it's one of his best attributes. It probably doesn't get brought up enough. And those guys I listed, not Kamara, but obviously McCaffrey and Barkley, and Cook has a long history of missing time as well, mm-hmm. are, to me, their biggest negatives. But when I did these lists and I'm doing every position, I looked at it as how good is this football player right now? So, yes, I definitely hold durability against some of these guys, but I think Christian McCaffrey's really, really good, and he's 24 years old, and – I'm not worried that he's going to get injured a lot more than others. And same with Barkley. And there's some luck involved with that. So that's a great retort in Henry's favor. And I don't really have a great answer for it because of the top five. He's the one you trust the most that way. Matt Williamson, former scout, NFL analyst for Pro Football Network. Um, it, you know, it's interesting because uh, the running back position obviously has been devalued and, and, uh, one of the things that stood out to me reading through your list is the number of running backs that I really like uh, in the game now. Yeah. And, and to think that Nick Chubb is outside the top five, Zeke is, is outside the top five, love Aaron Jones at Green Bay, Jonathan Taylor uh, has, has certainly room to grow, Joe Mixon. I mean, you can go on and on with some of the Cam Akers, another guy I really like. Is, is there a guy that, that you're seeing in 2021 that, that maybe isn't near the top that you think could be in a year or two? 
That's a good question. I, I mean, I, I didn't include rookies on any of these lists because right. I just didn't think it was fair to judge them, never seeing them in the NFL. I really liked last year's crops of running backs, though. You mentioned a couple of them, mm-hmm. Dobbins, Akers, Swift, Taylor, uh, even Edward Solaire, who didn't blow me away. He was 25th on my list, but I think he has better things to come. I think all those guys are ascending. I'm a little bit of a Steelers homer. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. And maybe we could talk a little Bud Dupree because I, I work pretty closely with the Steelers. But I think Najee Harris, who isn't on that list, yeah. will be very high on that list. Well, wasn't that now. a perfect fit for him? Yeah, there, it really is. They're going to use him just like they did Lev Bell, you know, detach him, throw him the ball, short yardage, third down, all instances. Um, not, not how Tennessee uses Henry. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Look right. at you, man. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, just infuriate all the people on our Twitter feed uh, as you continue. <laughs> now, I, I will say this: your wide receiver list. You've got AJ Brown in the top five too. Mm-hmm. I adore him. I think he. I think in my blurb I wrote something about: is he the next Julio Jones? And I couldn't come up with a better you know, sentence to praise a young receiver. I think he's very, very special, unbelievable after the catch, only getting better, probably will even get more targets this year. Even though he gets more coverage attention, I'm not worried about it at all. Like if I were investing in any of the receivers on that list, I think A.J. Brown would be the guy I would. Man, no doubt about it. I, I, you were talking about Najee Harris. Uh, they got a different different front up there, you know, with no pouncing, no foster, no – I mean, the Castro's on the last limb, but Villanueva's out of there. But we'll go to the defensive side of the ball. Bud Dupree, give me a little something about it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys are going to like him. I mean, there's a lot of money, but that aside, I'm not sure if he's going to be worth the dollars, but um, I I, I get a check from the Steelers. I work with the Steelers. I I am not an employee, but I host a Steelers radio show for their rate, for their network. I, I live at training camp with those guys. I've watched every snap Bud's ever played as well as a lot of practices. He is unbelievably physically impressive. Like, I don't know if you guys have met him yet or been around him. He sure looks the part. He is very thickly built. He's very, very explosive, especially in a straight line. And I I urge your listeners to go look at his combine results. I mean, his jumps were amazing. And that shows up on the field. When he arrives, he blows people up. He's not great changing direction or dipping his shoulder and getting low like a Von Miller on on an edge pass rush, but he's come a really long way in the last couple years. And I think there's a misconception that, boy, boy, Bud is just Robin to T.J. Watt's Batman. And I think he's much, much better than that, you know, that he's going to beat single blocks a high percentage of the time. He's going to command some double teams. And I think the best football is in front of him. Love it, Matt. Hey, man, uh, thanks for uh, hopping on and, and uh, trying to defend the uh, the Derrick Henry number five thing and, and uh, the, the cool stuff on A.J. Brown and Bud Dupree. Really appreciate you, man. Absolutely. Thanks, right. guys. Matt yeah. Williamson, NFL on Twitter. Matt Williamson from Pro Football Network. There you go. I mean, he didn't sell any of us on, on the Derrick Henry thing, but ultimately, it's I mean, it's a freaking list. I, yeah, it, you know, I totally. Mean. <laughs> I, think the good thing, I think the good thing is us as Titans fans were able to stump the swab in that, so. They say they didn't have an answer for it. Look at uh, Joe Hunk trying to remind me that we have tickets to give away. Yes! Yes! Brown, baby! Yes. Slay reminded me during the break, and so now I'm reminding you. Let's guys. do it That's right now because we've got we've got two more pairs. So let's do one pair here and then one pair in the 5 o'clock hour. So be call number five now through to the Mohawk Wonder <laughs> producer Hunk for a chance to win a pair of tickets to see Zach Brown Band's The Comeback Tour at Bridgestone <laughs> Arena on October 17th. Do it now. 615-737-1045. More Titans talk than anyone else. What a catch! Your home for Titans football and the flagship of Titans Radio. 1045 The Zone. I would totally win in a fight against Buck. Come on, people. Who is that 12%? Um, hey, if you want to win in your home loan. Now's the time because home loan rates are incredible. They're back down again. And if you want to win in that, you need to call Loan Pronto right now. Get your new home loan. Lock in the rate of your lifetime. Call now. Take advantage of Loan Pronto special zero-cost refi program. Snag a super low rate. No junk fees. No closing costs. And listen, 
they don't just roll those closing costs into your loan, so you're still paying for them anyway. They actually cover them for you. Not very many others do this. Even if you refinance last month or maybe even last year, do it again. Loan Pronto's all digital process is fast. It's easy. Most loans get closed in 14 days, and most of them don't even require an appraisal. Ask how easy it is to get cash out of your home's equity right now. Thirty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars is what they're seeing right about now. So don't just let that equity sit there. Use it because it is your money. 615-499-5780 or loanpronto.com. If your current mortgage rate starts with a three, act now. 615-499-5780, loanpronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS, 1661781. Subject to lender approval. Not all loans eligible for zero cost. This is Tiki Barber with a CBS Sports Minute. There's an epidemic of bad baseball taking root in MLB this year, especially at the plate. For the sixth time this season, a major league team was no hit. To compound matters, the six no-nos have had repeat victims. With the Indians, Mariners, and Rangers, who failed to register a hit last night against the Yankees' Corey Kluber, all having been on the hitless side twice. And it's not even June yet. This is getting embarrassing and starting to compound an already compromised game that has seen hitting become anemic, except for the home run, of course. Maybe it's the baseballs, as the league is experimenting with deadening balls in an effort to cut down on the explosion of the long ball though it's more likely a collective flawed approach at the plate. Either way, it's starting to feel that the unintended consequence of some great pitching performances is a game that's hard to watch. I'm Tiki Barber. Summer, it's almost here, but Memorial Day savings are already at the Home Depot. In-store, online, store-wide. Like five bags of garden fresh mulch for just 10 bucks. Save on everything from flower beds to a fresh coat of paint. From power tools to ceiling fans. Ready, set, summer. Memorial Day savings, here now, only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Limit 75 bags per customer. Color selection varies by store. While supplies last, continental U.S. only. Got to finish this today. Cristiano's construction projects typically run smoothly, but this project's pipeline is about to burst. Yo, boss, where you want us to put this? To the left.
Cafe. It's Thank You Thursdays at Moe's Southwest Grill. They're offering $6 burritos, bowls, or two tacos. Come check out their new look and grab yourself a little something. Hey, and while you're at it, be sure to scan your Moe's app to have a chance to win free burritos for a year. Dealing with a wreck in Smyrna still, two of the right lanes are blocked at I-24 eastbound after Sam Ridley Parkway, and also a disabled vehicle blocking the center lane still downtown at I-24 eastbound at Spring Street. Also, I-24 westbound near Maxi Road, we have a crash, and also an accident at Gallatin Pike at Hickory Street. Be on the lookout for that. I'm Joshua Clay with traffic on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. From the Mark Spain Real Estate Studio, WGFX Gallatin, Nashville. A cumulus station. Our season never ends. Your home for Titans and Falls football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good afternoon. I am Joe Hunk. Both the Preds and the Panthers are in the same boat. Down 2-0. In their best of seven series, the Panthers are getting started here in 25 minutes for an opportunity to make it 2-1 in their series against the Lightning as they go at it tonight in Tampa. And remember, the winner of these two series will play each other in the next round. Also, Tennessee and Vanderbilt are both wrapping up the regular season starting tonight. The Vols are on the road in South Carolina and the Vol and the Commodores are at home hosting the Kentucky Wildcats. Right now, Tennessee has the inside lane at the number one spot in the SEC baseball tournament going into next weekend. And depending on what happens in these three games for both teams, will determine who is that one seed. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once at your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty on Davenport. out today yep and she just left the building and look who took her place i don't know how she's gonna feel about this <laughs> she will get upset about this i will say this the cardboard brent doherty i look like a damn fool ron clay <laughs> i mean look at that Why, guy dude? that guy can't get anything done look at him <laughs> he can't get anything done <laughs> hey yes he can man is it like a half wink like is it one eye half closed man, the sun is like a squint <laughs> Looking like I can't really see you, but can you see me type thing? <laughs> like he's I, celebrating something? I, like, woo! No, it looks like I know something that you don't. Yeah, it? that look that that's <laughs> like, Yeah. That look is snow so sneaky. Oh, snow sneaky. What is a snow sneaky? That looks so sneaky, Brent. That's a sneaky look right there, dude. I like it when you say something incorrectly and then you point yourself out. Yeah, yeah, gotta call you gotta call yourself out. Oh uh, no, you gotta yeah. I tell my kids all the time, you gotta laugh at yourself. Yeah, yeah man. if you can't, man. It's gonna be a long life. Hey, man, I promise you. I can, <laughs> I can guarantee you that, boy. Um, so if you're not watching this on TVV, the Preds gave us our cardboard cutouts back. Um, and they were nice enough to to throw out a cardboard cutout, Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, uh, Ramon Foster, and Blaine Bishop. Um, so we appreciate that. I guess somebody delivered them to the radio station. Did Lindsey Riley come over here? I, I don't know. Somebody did. Um, so do we get to take these things home? We need a cardboard cutout, Ron Slay, but you weren't around for that. I wasn't, and I'm 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 kind of PO'd about that. Almost as PO'd as I was, as I was when the show started. No, nah, not that way. Let me play that audio again for you. No. Nah. Okay, just no. check. Oh, no. for those that missed it, Ron was pretty uh, fired up about the Preds losing game two. Um, mm -hmm. There were a couple of different things that irritated you. And as a former player, I, I get it, too, because it got me. And I'm not a former player. But, you know, you're even, a competitor. even yes, very much so. If you're if you're a head coach and you lose a game to go down 2-0 in a series, nobody wants to hear we played well. Mm -mm. Nobody wants to hear that. And you may not care. I, you know, I'm just trying to help you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, as I told Joe earlier, save us from us. I'm trying to save you from you. Right. That, that It's not a good look. Man. No, it's not. Listen, man, no no players that I know that are competitor. Com what? Slay, what are you talking about? No players that I know that are competitive yeah. are in the moral victories. Like, w w just not. Like, that That eats at your soul of competition. Just like you say, you're not a, you're not a former player, but you are a competitor. Like, and people that love to compete in anything don't want to hear about the, 
Oh, that's all right, man. You really gave it your all out there. No, yeah, man, I, mean, I, man, I lost, man. I mean, in all seriousness, we are in a very competitive business. So, right. you know, I, I tell people all the time, my goal is to win every day. And I, I know a lot of y'all listening are in competitive fields, and, and that's your goal, too. You wake up like, hey, man, God gave me today. Mm-hmm. There's only one of them. Mm-hmm. I tell my kids that all the time. They hate it. I, I always say, hey, God gave you one Thursday, May 20th, 2021. What are you going to do with it? And, and Roman Yossi even said it after after the game, and, and Ron's going to learn this too. The same thing that's hurting the Preds right now in this series is the same thing that has hurt the Preds for the past few years. And that's a shame. And they know it too. Yeah. Here's, yeah. here's what I want to hear from these people. We're down 2-0, and we're pissed off. Yeah. We haven't played as well as we can, and we're pissed off. We're going back to Nashville, and we're going to go into Bridgestone Arena, and we're going to be pissed off mm-hmm. because this ain't us. Mm-hmm. And and they've had their way, man. Yo. I mean, seven power plays without that, a goal. That's as amazing. I said earlier in the show, I mean, that changes the way your opponent deals with you. Yep. When they know that you're not going to score in the power play, they're going to be extra physical because they don't care if they yep. get in the penalty box. Yep. They don't yep. care. And whenever we're ready to turn it on and keep our foot on the throttle, we can do it. That's why we scored that last goal to make it 3-0. I know the game was well in hand and it was less than a minute to play, but here. Take this since we got to get on the road and go back to Bridgestone. <laughs> yeah. So all, all you fans, like you just said, that's the player's mentality. That's what you want the fans to come in to Bridgestone and fill it up and cheer you on. And you have, this is what Johansson said when he was on with us. I can't wait to get into that atmosphere again. It's much needed. Okay, cool. So well, here we, we present. It, here, here it we is. Go. That, it, ex- exactly. Here we go. Exactly. What are you do? Now, now, leave it all out there, and whatever happens, happens, and let us, honestly, let us be the judge of it. Now, the problem is that Carolina is the better team. So, you need, I mean, you need more of you. Mm -hmm. That's what Will Bowling was saying a couple days ago, and I I thought he handled it beautifully and said it beautifully. That you need to be more of you. You need to worry less about what they're doing and trying to match what they're doing and be more of you. So, that's what needs to happen on Friday. Now, the, the troubling part of this is... They couldn't even get set up on the power play. Right. Right? Like, so there are high danger chances coming back at them shorthanded from Carolina. So it's not even that they're not effective on the power play. They're also giving up high danger chances while they're on the power play and Carolina is is trying to kill it. That's it. There was one power play in game one. They didn't even get a shot off. Two minutes, didn't even get a shot off. They're 0 for 10 in the series. 0 for 10. I, I hate I hate we had to recap that for but for everybody that's just listening in, man. That yeah. I, now now I'm back drained again. And I'm gonna pick it back up because I was over it and I'm ready to move on well, to Friday. Here's the question. So you're always looking for questions. So they're mm-hmm. down 2-0 in the series. Obviously, game three is a must win. Right. Because you fall behind 3-0, you're done. And a lot of people listening are right now saying, hey, Doherty, they're done right now. And whether that's true or not, you can't look at it like that, obviously, if you're them. um, Because the way that you're looking at it as an athlete, Slay, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, all right, they held serve. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going back to Nashville. We're going to take games three and four. And then it's it's a best two out of three. In all that reality, they did what they were supposed to do. It's true. Yep. Right? But the troubling part is the way those two games happen. And I get that they played better in game two. But don't tell me you played well. No. That would no. Cuz playing better still means you're still down 0-2. Exactly. Because I would argue that Carolina got that 1-0 lead and they knew that the Preds couldn't score. So that so they're they're oh, holding cool. back. It a seriously bit. felt like it was 4 nothing. Like down 1 nothing in the first felt like it was 4 nothing. Think about also like how many shots they had to make it 2-0 and UC mm-hmm. kept that game at 1-0. Mhm. Mhm. I mean, they had a breakaway. They had a 3 on 1. They had a two-on-one, and some, he just kept kept coming up with save after save. Some really good one-timer looks as well. Blocked him. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, we'll be out at uh, Poncho and Lefties on Friday. We'll Come have, on down, because we're going to be fired back up. We'll have a different tone. We'll have a I different tone you. on Friday. I promise you. Which is tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to lick our wounds. Today's I'm licking Thursday. my wounds. Is that where we are in this week? Today is Thursday. Okay. Yes, yeah, tomorrow, guys. All right. Um, Memphis Grizzlies. 
Get yeah. it done in round one of the play in tournament. Are, are we even, even, no, how are we defining no, this? No, listen, man. Grizzlies, how are we defining this? Grizzlies, go handle your business so you can get in the playoffs and leave it at that. You got one, you got an extra regular season game to get into the playoffs. We're going to leave it just like that. They played well against San they Antonio. They played very ha- well. Having said that, though, San Antonio had a shot at the end. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. <laughs> Which is tough. And, and John Morant, two for six from the free throw mm-hmm. line and kind of kept it at, at a two score game. Toward the end, he I, I saw pictures of him after the game was over. He went and shot free throws for like good. a long time That's after good. the game. Um, because they got to go to Golden State next. Valanciunas, uh, for those that d- ha- don't haven't watched the Grizz or whatever, you might want to watch this game against Golden State um, tomorrow night. Uh, kind of flip back and forth, DVR one. You know, maybe maybe hockey's not your thing. Maybe maybe you can check them out. But Valanciunas slaying twenty three mm-hmm. points, twenty three rebounds, and and I was listening to our buddy uh, Chris Vernon about a month ago, and and. He does uh, the Fox TV, like, post-game, pre-game with Brevin Knight and all those guys. My guy, B. Knight. Yes, and he said that uh, he's the most underrated guy in the NBA. Nobody talking about him, and he just goes out there and double-doubles you to death. It's without question. He's been doing it steadily uh, for the last three or four years. So, I, I don't, it's hard when he gets overlooked every time because he's on a team with a superstar like a John Morant because or Kawhi John will Because John will give you probably, like, the same amount of points or whatever, but he'll have, like, some <laughs> superized yeah. highlight thing yeah. that ends up on SportsCenter. Yep. And Valanciunas just goes about his business. Yeah, Yeoman's work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were talking about Yeoman's work yesterday. Yeah, Way to work that in. Dylan mm-hmm. Brooks also uh, defensively, that's, that's the guy. That's my guy. That's the guy. And so he fouled out against Golden State a few nights ago uh, when the Grizz came all the way back against Golden State um, and took the lead trying to get in that game with the Lakers yep. where you have a better opportunity. Uh, but Steph went Steph because Dylan Brooks went out. <laughs> yep. And then Steph hit like 6-3. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been a big fan of uh, Dylan Brooks, though, ever since he was at Oregon. Yeah. When he went on, that man can play, man. Yep. Love Dylan Brooks. Dennis. So, Grizz at Golden State, 8 o'clock on ESPN. Warriors are favored by 3.5. I actually sat down after I got done. Uh, I had DVR'd the Preds game, so mm-hmm. I watched it later after everybody went to sleep, and I, I put the phone away and all of those things. Um, but I got into bed and watched the end of the uh, Lakers uh, Warriors game, and that that was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Draymond Green was doing his thing, and mm-hmm. he he wasn't backing down to LeBron, and, and yep. he got LeBron once where LeBron hit his head on the on the floor, I guess. Yeah, it scratched him in the eye, and then it was. Uh, it scratched him in the eye. Yeah, I don't even want to touch on that, man. You I'm saw a three rims, fan. man. Yeah, and, t- and just luckily I picked the one in the middle, huh? Yeah, that boy, that boy that is crazy. That's my boy, too. That's crazy. <laughs> you like him, but you I hate that LeBron. stuff. I, uh, this, this is too dramatic, dog. Come on, Bron. He is dramatic. I can't defend this, dog. Yeah, he's dramatic. You picked, you, you, you went to the fair, you picked three rims. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just say it's muscle memory, man. I've been doing this all my life. Great guys make great shots. That's, leave it at that. I mean, he shot it from like the R in Staples. Center. Great shot. Steph said it. Great players make great shots. It's part of the game. Not the ah, – I couldn't even see you, man. man. My eyes up, pick the rim in the middle, and that it. No, nah, come on, dog. That's come the on, part King. of him I can't get past come is on, all the King. drama. When, when he goes and sits in the corner and come all on, that King. stuff. Come on, King. Don't, come don't, on. Don't, come on. Give me something to go fight with, man. I can't go to court and fight with this dude. If that's what you're going to give me. <laughs> Fred Dorney, Ross Lay with you. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045 on Twitter. Jay Mart and Ramon. But I end up getting a, <laughs> the wife of New Sport and Sport. He had this Ford Mustang on the lot. So you picked that up also? I picked it up. Come on, man. I sometimes <laughs> pick up like Altoids. You're like, I was buying her a car. I decided, yeah, I'll buy that Mustang too. Jay Mart and Ramon. Tomorrow morning from 6 to 10. 1045. The Zone. I see you, Ramon, with those first world problems. I got something for Ramon right here. And uh, hopefully you as well. There is a Cars and Watch event at Brentwood Jewelry going down on Saturday, June 5th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can go check out uh, the exquisite cars, uh, but also the Braemont watches, which are phenomenal. Um, So you can meet the Braemont U.S. watch team, win prizes, enjoy food and beverages, peruse the exquisite Braemont watches, and enjoy the cars all in one location. Brentwood Jewelry, Saturday, June 5th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Check that out. Engagement time is here. Spring is the time for the perfect proposal. And my guys at Brentwood Jewelry are here to help you pop that question. Let them help you take the stress out of selecting the perfect engagement ring. They can help you find a beautiful ring in your ideal budget. Browse their incredible selection of -of one-of-a-kind rings or talk with their custom design specialists to create a stunning ring 
as remarkable as your loved one. Check them out. Also, graduation going on. Graduation, time to celebrate. 2021 graduates have been some of the most resilient. Celebrate them with a memorable piece from Brentwood Jewelry. Located in the heart of Brentwood, 7012 Church Street. Uh, Again, just off Franklin Road. Exceptional style, exceptional deals every day for more than 50 years. Check them out online, brentwoodjewelry.com rolling every day to make your outdoor event, your family gathering, or feeding the work crew easy. Handling orders of all sizes, they offer an all-you-can-eat buffet or
like a he is like an alarmingly high percentage of people don't think they could beat a house cat. <laughs> wow. But like the one that he was consumed by was the goose. <laughs> Dude. Because he felt like if you get a wing, you can get the goose down, and then you can ground and pound. <laughs> that neck probably start ground and pound the goose. Yeah, it depends if it, man. That goose can it's it's that neck, neck gets strong, that, man. That neck can swing around and get you. Yeah, those things are mean too, boy. You ever try feeding one? They get pissed off oh. when you joke around with them. You know what I'm scared of? You know the little wild turkeys you see rat walking in fields and stuff. Them, them right there. You stay away from them. Yeah, man. Cause I, man, it's some over where I go work out at. Skill wing workouts, man, and, and as soon as I'm getting ready to go in the gym, sometimes they're they around, yeah. And if you just look at them, they they say they won't do nothing to you, but dude, they start walking towards me, and I'm I'm off that. You working out in a barn? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big field over yeah, where are you working out. That's this a good is, this, a good this, is this is at uh, a, a school. This is a big field over by. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, I saw a story. <laughs> there the was barn. a seven foot alligator in Fort Myers, Florida. That was chasing people across a Wendy's parking lot. I see, that ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> no, nah, you can take the double stack see, and all that, man. You're going to Wendy's. You just want your double stack. Yeah, that's it. Are you going to just get in your car and leave, or you, do you want the double stack that bad that you're going to kind of manipulate the alligator situation in the parking lot? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the car, and I'm I'm so – I want to know what the alligator is going to do, so I'm probably driving around where I can just watch the gator and watch it chase other people. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm one of those guys. Like I'm, I, w- I'm I would do that animals. too. Honestly, I'm fascinated with animals. I would do that too because yeah. the reason why we're fascinated is because they're indeterminate. Like you can't right. figure out what they're going to no, no, do. Exactly. Nobody knows what they're. Nobody knows what they're. And they're out of their element. I mean, some old woman coming out of Wendy's with her frosty. And she oh. Just, I mean, I'm gonna she, be real. If I was that gator, I'd go get that frosty too. Old woman put down the frosty. frosty. So uh, seven foot alligator. We're not talking about That's some little gator. thing. That's Shaq. A Shaq, a Shaq alligator. Yeah. Shaq I mean, is an alligator. We're making several pairs of boots. We're not just making like a <laughs> like a tote. <laughs> oh, Babs are losing on that right though. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me you once had a python. Is that true? I did. <laughs> had a python. How did you come about a python? Impulse by after losing the SEC tournament. <laughs> <laughs> you know what make me happy? A snake. A python snake. Let me go. Who did you lose to? Do you remember? Dang, I don't remember who we lost to. We were in Atlanta. We lost. Tennessee has a history of not doing well in the SEC. Yeah, no, we don't. The 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 year we did good was my sophomore year. We lost to. We might have lost to Alabama. I ain't sure who it was, but but you went and bought a snake. I we went to the mall, <laughs> and I was like, man, I wanted to get over the fear that I had of snakes. So I went in there and held the snake in my hand, and that wasn't enough. I was like, oh man, it's cool. I can man, I can handle a snake. All you gotta do is do what. Okay, feed it and then, okay, just take it out and play with it. All. It's going to be cool. Oh, yeah. Man, let me get this snake, man. Got the snake, but I guess I forgot that we were going to have to get on the plane to come back. So, Vincent Yarbrough and his his mom, they drove down for the game. So, they drove my snake back in the box. So, wait, so how did that conversation go down? Like, hey, uh, Vincent Yarbrough's mom. Hey, Miss Lynn. I need I need you to take this python back to <laughs> Miss Lynn, can y'all take his? Can y'all take his snake back from me? Just hold this box. Just, just yeah. hold this box. You, you, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, the box might hiss at you, but it, it's just games. Just Ron, you better come it. get this snake. Is what she said. Ron, you better come get this snake when we get there. You know I'm coming to get it. Come on. So now. she did it. She took it back from me. That's that's love. It was, and she kept it, and I never went and got it. You never went and got it. She told me you because I was living in a, in, a, in Gibbs, and she was like. Ron, you need to come get this snake. It's over here hissing and everything. You could have given it to that tutor. What was that guy's name? Ron Payne. Ron Payne. See Payne. Yeah, he yeah. would have choked the hell out of Payne walking down the strip. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do my boy like that. So what happened to the python? Um, we ended up letting it go. <laughs> letting it go? Yeah, you be free. Give me free. So wait, is it still like? Is it still around Knoxville? Probably like, is. <laughs> Probably is. Yeah. Where, where did you let it go? Down by the river. <laughs> Like by Calhoun's? Yep. Right down there at the light by Thompson Bowling and Calhoun's right down the middle. Right there, and he slithered off like he was going in the river. He probably, when we turned our back, he probably came back up. Ain't no telling where he is. Probably, probably a big old python, python babies and everything yeah, running he around. procreated, there. I'm sure. Yeah. Dang. Probably a python problem at Tennessee. So if y'all got a problem with that up in Knoxville, my bad, y'all.
Jason Swain joins us. Swain, what do you think about all this? Swain's still up there. <laughs> he might have a problem with it. You see any Python? What the around? hell is going on? <laughs> Swain, man, I, hey, I had an impulse buy, man. I bought a Python and didn't want to keep it. He got upset that they lost the SEC tournament, so he bought a Python. So you like Steve Irvin, huh? <laughs> I'm, hey, hey, man, hey. I was more like, see, and another thing is, I was fascinated with Jake the Snake Roberts when I was little. <laughs> Oh, well, that explains it, dude. I get it. I get it. <laughs> See, was Jerry Green boy, your coach? It. Yes, he was. Did you tell him about the python? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. It's time to get ready for the NCAA tournament at the time. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, Swain, you ever seen a python on the loose up there? That was, that was my buddy. I ain't even got no name uh, for no, him. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen one, and I ain't looking for one. So. Well, <laughs> the reason why the python was on the loose is because Vincent Yarbrough's mom told Slade to come get that python because she didn't want it. Yep. <laughs> oh, I heard, oh, I've been listening. I've been listening, guys. Oh, oh yeah. It was All right. But, hey, hey when, we, when we lost games, I would just ha- I would have a 40 or drink a beer <laughs> or take shots. I ain't going to buy snakes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah I was, that was silly of me. That was silly of me. We all do silly things in college. That reminds me. I was rolling around with my buddy uh, Mo's, Mo's Phillips one time after uh, Tennessee lost a big basketball game. <laughs> it was like 2 in the morning on the strip. There's nobody out anymore. And uh, LaMarcus Golden was down there. <laughs> Marcus Golden could go, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. he could. But, uh, yeah, he didn't take the loss well, either. See? <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> he was by himself. See? Wandering the streets. Swain, speaking of mistakes people people have, man, as kids in college, which we were young adults at that time, but you're still a kid. Are we ever going to see these guys that got in any trouble get back on the field up at UT? <laughs> yes, please. Tell us. Uh, here in a couple of days. Okay. I'm here in, I'm here in June. Uh, they'll be back. Uh, you know, I don't know about Aaron Beats. So that's a whole other story. But mm-hmm. as far as the guys that was involved in the dorm room incident, um, yeah. yeah. I'm here in June. So, so what do you think that's done for the? I mean, cause that was a pretty big spring for some of those guys. Oh, a huge spring. I mean, you got a, a freshman quarterback that's looking to play, early, to play early with the quarterback play being kind of the reason why you have all, you know, you got a transfer quarterback uh, that's, that's left, you've got a new coach. The quarterback position has been the reason why Tennessee has not been able to get up over the hump. So, Great opportunity for for Caden Salter. So for him, uh, you know, he missed that opportunity to compete during the spring because that's why you come in during the spring is to get that head start. Uh, but he basically missed it because of, of the arrest. And then, you know, with Aaron Willis, you know, all the linebackers, uh, get, you know, either transferring out, uh, Aaron Beasley, you know, not playing would have been a great opportunity for Aaron Beasley. Uh, excuse me, Aaron Willis. And, uh, you know, he missed his opportunity. And, then, you know, he had two other guys transfer. But um, they should be back during, you know, June, which is important because that's kind of the first session of summer school. And that's when the off-season workout really, really kicks in the gear. And that's when you officially get ready for the uh, fall season. Tennessee with another transfer. Michigan linebacker transfer William Mohan uh, was a freshman on their team last year, three-star player. Uh, Michigan's linebacker coach came to Tennessee, so uh, this kid followed. It's funny, like, every time we talk to you, it seems like there's another player or two that, that has, is transferring to Tennessee. It's it's uh, certainly been a priority for uh, Josh Heupel and his staff. Well, it seems like every time you guys talk to me, someone is trying to escape Harbaugh. It's just like yeah. they just want to they just want to escape with <laughs> just a coach. Or a quarterback or a linebacker. They just want to escape Harbaugh, man. So, uh, yeah, this is this is like the third edition of the Tennessee's program from Michigan. And don't forget, a guy like Eric Gray was committed to Michigan before, you know, picking Tennessee and then transfer from Tennessee. Kavarge Krause, remember his announcement, uh, you know, Michigan put out a graphic <laughs> basically announcing that Kavarge Krause was coming to Michigan and then they had to delete it <laughs> because, you know, he, he picked Tennessee. So, uh, then you got Aubrey Solomon from Michigan. So, yeah, man, Tennessee's been a pain in Michigan's butt for sure. Hey, I, I got something for you, Swain. Now, we, we've been tuned into the, the, young, the young athletes up there and how they're adjusting, talking about the atmosphere and the energy. What have you seen from the coaches, these, these coaches, Coach Gardner and these guys like that that are back up there and how they're getting along? What have they said about the atmosphere? Is it a long road ahead for them or – are they diving right into it and everybody's been accepting? Everybody's on the positive note up there. 
Well, I think I think what you're seeing is uh, a lot of staff chemistry. That's something that was missing uh, with the previous group. And anytime mom and dad fights, you know, the kids feel that energy. Um, mm-hmm. They know what's going on. And so uh, it's kind of hard to have a productive, positive household when the parents are, are arguing and stuff like that. And so same thing with the coaches, man, and, and the culture there in Tennessee uh, this past couple seasons. Uh, the players didn't seem like they, they were playing up to their capabilities. And the staff chemistry and dynamics kind of kind of showed you why. Uh, the staff, they've worked together before, offensively, defensively, brought in with Martinez. Everyone has respect for Rodney Garner. Willie and Rodney coach together at Georgia. Uh, and so, yeah, there's there's more staff chemistry, and the players are seeing that. Um, and, and hopefully that will pay off. Um, this coach staff understands kind of a, the position that they're in. You know, kind of six months behind uh, the 2022 recruiting class, but, but they embracing it. I mean, there's no reason to make excuses. There's no reason to, to tell fans, you know, it's going to be a three-year, four-year rebuild because no one wants to hear it. No one cares. Just, just do the best you can do. Everyone understands that it's going to be a rebuild, uh, and the coaches have done a really good job with that. They, they are in a win-now uh, mode. They're not complaining about, oh, these not my players. Well, they your players the moment you sign that contract and start collecting them checks. So. Yeah, um, these guys are embracing it, and um, I like kind of the direction that we're going right now. Rick Barnes has two scholarships left on that basketball <laughs> roster. Uh, you heard anything uh, about them? Maybe adding anybody? Man, I haven't. I haven't. After seeing, you know, but Mayshak's Duncan Warmos, I don't think they need anybody else. I think we good. <laughs> Slave been talking <laughs> about Mayshak for a minute. I told him. Man, he only dunking like LeBron. I think we good, guys. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling you, when you talking about a diamond in the rough, that young man now, boy. That's what Kennedy Chandler said too. Like hey, y'all sleeping man. on this guy. I'm telling you. Woo! <laughs> he he's a dog, man. He's, yeah. He work. He's you know he he loves to work. It seems like he's a guy that loves the process, loves loves to grind. Uh, and when you embrace the, the the process, man, and you're never satisfied, you never get comfortable. I mean, before you you know you look around and. You know, your NBA lottery pick, one of the best players in the league. So, if he just continues, you know, that, that hunger, man, whew, he's going to be special. And th- and that's the thing. You got guys that's ready to step in up there in that position, and they see a guy like Coach Barnes who's gotten guys with talent with not the talent that you need to come in and be a one-and-done, but develop talent also. And he's doing a terrific job of that. And I think that's the thing that's, you know, getting kids to come in there with Coach Barnes. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's an interesting dynamic, man. I, mm-hmm. You know, I refer, um, you know, kind of refer to you, uh, or defer, defer to you, excuse me. Um, you know, we've seen Ray Barnes do the same thing that Kentucky and Duke has been doing over the last couple of years with the one and done, mm-hmm. and just something was off, you know, with the team last year. How about talent? It was fun seeing, you know, Keon uh, basically, uh, you know, make a son out of a Georgia player, uh, dunking on him, and <laughs> seeing Jaden Springer take over games. It was cool to see that and see those guys how great they were, but. It's just something was off with the chemistry. Something was off with with the basketball team that basically has, you know, two or three guys that's going to play in the NBA. And so I think Rick Barnes has, has to figure out, okay, how do I get this talent in here, but at the same time make sure that these guys are playing together like the group that he had in 2018, where you didn't have a bunch of guys that were recruited high, but that chemistry was on point. Those guys were hungry, uh, and they played a whole lot better. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, he had more talent last year. But two years ago, uh, you had a group that wasn't as talented coming in, but they achieved more as a team. So Rick Barnes has to figure that out. There he is, Jason Swain at Swain Event. SwainEvent.com. Check him out. Thank you, Swain. Appreciate it, man. Python, run, really. <laughs> People <laughs> all over. Uh, hey, appreciate it. James on Twitter, that's against the law, letting Pythons go in the wild. Yeah, I was. I, listen, man, I was, that was a wild a long time guy. ago. Yeah, and I was a wild guy at that time. Yeah, hey, I just. I want one of them scholarships. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Let me get one of them scholarships. I'll be ready come August. Uh, yo, at, uh, yo, hashtag cardboard Brent. This is from Mr. Caples. Uh, looks like the parent coach on the progressive commercials. <laughs> LOL. Zone TV, get it. We'll be right back. Your chance to win Zach Brown t- band tickets coming up. Kevin, Matt, stay there. We'll come and add you next on 104.5 The Zone. Getting you set for Titans training camp. Bam! Your home for Titans football and the flagship of Titans radio. 104.5 The Zone.
deer hunters, fishermen, and outdoorsmen. Bring your hobbies indoors for the day at the Tennessee Outdoor Rendezvous event this Saturday and Sunday at the Farm Bureau Expo Center in Lebanon. Seminars, big buck contest, exhibitors...
had a scene called Up in the Air with George Clooney where he travels the country and fires people. Yeah, you want to talk about a messed up movie, man. I love that that film. I don't know why I love that film. It's so depressing. Up in the Air? Yeah. Yeah, he, he literally flies around and businesses like, like Fortune 500 companies call him in to fire their employees. Right, so him. so HR doesn't have to do it. Like, they call in this firm to come in and fire people. That's Spoiler crazy. alert. Yeah. Speaking of calling in. <laughs> we do have some phone calls. 615-737-1045. Uh, I thought first, we were giving the tickets away. First, we got to give tickets yeah, away. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Call that's in. where you were going. Hell, yeah, man. Yeah. My game today, Slay. You're, that's, you, a, I'm, that's what I'm here for, bro. You, you've been lifting me up today, man, man. Throw it off the glass. Watch what I do with it. Been trying. <laughs> been trying. Babs is back. Cardboard Babs is back, yes. Uh, be caller number five now uh, to hopefully win a pair of tickets to see the Zach Brown Band's comeback tour at Bridgestone Arena on October 17th. Yeah. Call the hunk man right now, 615-737-1045. That's 615-737-1045. Call the hunk now. Can I give a shout out real quick before we get to the call? Well, of course, you can give a shout out. I always ask, man. Why do you ask? Shout of... them out. Okay. Um, I told Why don't we you. We do it every day. We just <laughs> shout out some random <laughs> yeah, people at the end of the show. Man, 14 years playing around the country. No, around the world, I'm sorry. And you you get different family members, man. And these teammates become family members. You spend a lot of time with them. So I got to give a shout out to my my guy, Self Daly Boy and Ashley Daly Boy, but more so my dog, Lil Coop. Lil Coop. Cooper Trooper. It's Cooper. Coop Dalaboa. Um, but how old is Coop now? I think Coop is like nine or ten. So that's my guy, man. I love it. Coop, I gotta show you a picture. Coop wears an arm sleeve and a headband, and he'll go to school like that. With an you, arm sleeve and a just headband. Ready on. for the game. That man, my dog ready, man. Game breaks out in Cooper fourth period. Trooper, he's there. Yeah. Shout out. He, so I know he's watching <laughs> right now. So we got people all over watching. Springboro, what up, Springboro, Ohio? I love it. Mm-hmm. All right. Six one five seven three seven one oh four five. I gotta go to Cousin got? Spencer next up on 3HL. All right. Spence, you want to talk oh. about wild animals? Is that where we are? Well, you know, I, I chime into the radio when I hear you talking about turkeys and geese and this <laughs> for those python. That, for those that miss it, Ron Slade terrified of wild turkey. Yeah, I think that's Not to drink wild turkey. No, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll battle that. But <laughs> the wild turkey. So, animal. first off, there's probably uh, many unaccounted deaths in Knoxville right now because Ron Slade decides to let Python on the loose. <laughs> this, this is true. That's an unbelievable story. This is true. It was silly of me. Wild. Sorry. And, and Ron, <laughs> listen, you do not need to be afraid of wild turkeys. They are the dumbest animals on this planet. Are they? Oh, dude, the house I grew up in, we'd go to the the, the school bus stop and there'd be 20, tur- 20 turkeys in our front yard. You could throw a rock at one of them, knock them cold out, and the other ones won't even notice. They'll just walk around in circles, cluck, clucking away. Dude, they look like it was like three of them when they looked and they started to spread his little wings and walk up on them. Do you ever do the, like, nah. the turkey call, Slay? Nah, I'd be like, boo, boo. Get yeah, you got to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, that's a boo. <laughs> I don't know what that does. Nah, but that's what I want to tell you. Don't, don't be worried about them okay. anymore. You're good. I They're you. dumb. You're fine, man. Now, I'm going to video it next time, and I'm, I'm going to tag you in it to make sure that – can, can yeah, you they, imagine they if that story would have gotten out when Ron Slay was a player at Tennessee? Oh. SEC player oh, of the man. year. <laughs> Let's Python loose. And knock oh, boy. Them. Oh, boy. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> they would have had a field day. With a look. <laughs> Luckily, wasn't no social media then because I, yeah. yeah. Hey, but but don't get near Goose. Those things are wild. I knew it. I, I knew they were wild. I stay away. They got man. little balls in their wings, and they'll bop you in the head real quick. Wow. I'm sorry. You said they have balls in their wings? So, so like they they got like these this muscle that's like the shape of a ball in their wings, and they come at you and spread them, spread their wings at you, and they'll pop you real quick, and it hurts. Wow. So stay away from them. Geese balls. <laughs> I <laughs> tell us why. Well, right, just... <laughs> geese balls. Be aware of geese balls. Getting slapped with geese balls. They have balls in their wings. I wonder how many is it a lot of balls in his wings? Like, unfortunate hey, man, look, dude, he walked, I got a, I got a couple balls for you. Like a guy on the corner with the watches in his jacket. Did a geese ro- raise his feather, <laughs> his wing open, and got like six balls. Except the guy with the watches in his jacket is always pretty happy. Like, geese <laughs> never <laughs> look happy, man. Nah, they, yeah. geese, are, geese are like cats. They look like they're always trying to kill That's your true. ass. That's true. That is so true. Don Davenport just texted us. I'm yes, scared, to, I'm I, I scared gotta, to read I, it. I got to. I'm, I'm hurting up. Best college football team in every state. 2000. What? 
Babs, I will not say that on there. So I ain't. What happened? Well, I mean, based nope. if you go by record. By, it, it's his best. It's his best football team, but in in every state, and Memphis was is Tennessee's. What do you think about that, Slay? I admit, man, that, see, she's I basically ca- trying to get you make sure you don't talk about Goose's balls I, anymore. Did, listen, I came I, to the show with a headache. You're leaving the show with a headache. Yeah, that why Babs. <laughs> you know, and Babs, I even apologize to your cutout. Why would you send that? I know. People have been messing with uh, Don Davenport's uh, cardboard cutout on the Zone TV feed. Because she's smiling. So, like, one guy said, hey, Babs, roll tide. And she's still smiling. Smile if you love Alabama. <laughs> the best team in Ohio was Cincinnati. Does that make you feel better? Yes, it does. You're the kind of guy that gets happy when others are brought down. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be me right now. That's me. What up, Mark and Panda Express the show, love? What up, Cooper Trooper? What up, Python wandering in the streets of Knoxville? <laughs> what up, cut up, Babs? Recorded 3 HL next on 104. Watch out, let me some market him. Love y'all. Sometimes they just get down to business. We got a little business here on the table. Blaine and Mickey. Tomorrow afternoon, 1 to 3 on 104.5 The Zone.